order. Oh, let me find my spot here. Okay, City Clerk, roll we'll call. Mayor Chair Hoffauer? Here. Mayor Personal Vice Chair Fisher? Here. Council Member Director Davenport? Here. Council Member Director Sturia? Here. Council Member Director Morlock? Here. Mayor Before? Okay, public comments. Does this sound funny tonight? This sounds really hollow and loud. I think it sounds lovely. It sounds a little bit of feedback. Maybe I'm going to take a look at that. I don't even have a hearing aid. It sounds really, really loud. Audio, check, 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 uh, check, check. And my, my speaker's off here, and this speaker's off here, so. Okay, uh, any public comments? Seeing none. Presentation by the city attorney. Successor agency agenda. Those are the only items that will be discussed, and there's no additions. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and let's go do it.
Res 2, item 4.1, uh, discussion rate personnel matters, John J. Murphy, city manager contract. In closed session, the council held a brief discussion regarding outstanding questions on tonight's proposed contract with John J. Murphy for the city manager position. There's no further reportable action at this time. Um, item 4.2 CC, it's one matter, anticipated litigation. In closed session, council authorized the city attorney and city manager to mediate this matter, matter if possible, before filing civil action for damages. Uh, no further reportable action at this time. Item 4.3, Community Development Associates versus City of Palmdale, pending litigation. In closed session, the City Council is apprised of the status of this litigation and the upcoming mediation. Council provided unanimous directions to the City Attorney and City Manager. No further reportable action this time. Uh, item 4.4, .4, um, City of Palmdale et al. versus Westwind LLC et al. Pending litigation. In closed session, City Council is apprised of the status of this litigation. There's no further reportable action at this time. Um, item 4.5, CC 8. PNs 3003 081 924, 925, and 926, the Convention Center property. Um, uh, in closed session, the City Council asked for additional information. I should have changed that one. And requested that the item be brought back to the December City Council or the January City Council meeting. January or later, if needed, um, and that's I, I think it was as, as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Let me just write that. Okay, and then it's the same report for the successor agency end of that. Um, discussion and, and there's no further reportable action at this time um, that concludes the closed session report okay um, okay so we'll adjourn at five o'clock we'll go we'll take a break and we'll see you see you all all of y'all <laughs> a few minutes thank you
very much for being here. Um, just a reminder, if you have a topic that you want to speak on tonight, just so we can kind of keep order to the meeting, can you make sure you see one of our staff or one of our ambassadors? Make sure you get a, a speaker slip and give it to the city clerk, the lady sitting over here at this desk, uh, and then she'll make sure that we get you called up uh, to, to speak. And it also allows us the ability to get back to you if you have a question or a problem or we have want some more information from you. We've got a record, and we get, we're able to track you down. And that way she spells your name right. So, okay. So uh, we'll call the 7 o'clock meeting of the city council, the, well, um, the successor agency, the PCA, uh, Community Association, and the Financing Authority meetings all to order now. Correct? We good? Okay. And um, so we'll do a pledge, pledge of allegiance. And let me look around here. Who do I want to get to do that here? Oh! Bishop, you can't hide. I'll find you. You got a big lot of hair sticking way out there. Just do this. I mean, yeah. Okay, Bishop, the way we do this is um, we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance, and we do a moment of silence in honor of the troops. If you'd like to do a brief invocation, that's up to you. I can't stop you from talking, sir. And, uh, and also, ladies and gentlemen, this evening... We're going to be adjourning the meeting this evening in the memory of William Strong. William was a Boy Scout. He was a uh, member of our local Sea Scouts. He was the bosun, which is like the chief petty officer on the crew. Uh, and uh, he uh, inexplicably passed away the other night. So um, I, I knew this kid for a lot of years. He was a good kid. And uh, I just want to want to do that for the family, okay? So, all right. So, so the order is... Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance. And then, then we do a silence. moment of silence, but if you choose to speak. Okay. <laughs> okay. With your hand over your, your right hand over your left heart. <laughs> <laughs> Let us begin. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ladies and gentlemen, would you join with us in a moment of silence? Father, we're so thankful that we're here. The brothers and sisters that are on the dais as our leaders, and we pray for their wisdom and those of us who are in the audience who will be speaking, we pray that you will keep our hearts to be respectful of those who are our leaders. And then we had a moment of silence for one who was a part of our community, and we ask your blessings upon the family that is remaining, that they might be somehow in this holiday still be able to be joyful. We ask you to give us directions tonight. Special blessing on our mayor and the council and all of the staff. We pray this in the precious name of our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, you, Bishop. I appreciate that very much. My pleasure. So, ladies and gentlemen, I know there's probably nobody in here that doesn't know Henry Hearns. But he's a past mayor uh, for the uh, in the city of Lancaster, and I th and uh, he's over here snooping on us tonight. So <laughs> thank you for being here, Bishop. And he run he's a, runs a, probably one of the uh, uh, it's a great service. His church out there at the uh, um, uh, Li Li Livingstone Church out there in Little Rock, and I'll tell you what. I, any, you, you go to church there, and next Sunday you go someplace else. It gets real boring. So <laughs> they do a great job up there. Thank you very much, Bishop, for being here today. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. Um, so we can... Uh, uh, let's see. So we need to do a, uh, a roll call for this meeting. Madam uh, City Clerk. Here. Mayor Pro Tem, Vice Chair Bishop. Here. Council Member Director and Member of the Board. Here. Here. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to ask the council's indulgence for a moment here. Uh, after the presentations, I'd like to move 
uh, new business item number 22. There's a couple items there, but just move them up so we can get those done and move through those. Uh, any objection from the council? No. Okay, thank you very much. So the audience, if you if you're thinking about number 22, we're gonna we'll, we'll move that up after the presentations here. Okay. All right. So we got a couple presentations. All right. Oh, it's working. <laughs> it's working. Yeah, it's working. So every month we bring a, uh, uh, a critter over from the animal shelter. Ladies and gentlemen, we are at 100% of the, of, the, of the little critters we bring out here every month, 100% adoption by, by you guys taking these pictures, reposting them out there on Facebook, and, uh, and just the publicity we get out here. For these dogs, I like to refer to these as our homeless, uh, our homeless little friends here. 100%. We had the Jupiter, and this is I'll tell you what. Last month we had Jupiter here. He was a pit terrier, something or other, something or other mix, and uh, we actually got a 72-hour notice that we're going to put him down. And everybody that had seen that dog and saw the picture of that dog licking my face at the council, and I do not put gravy on my face to do that, but. But uh, yeah, so the, the, everybody uh, everybody uh, got together there. And next thing I know, Jesse here ends up sending me a text with a picture. Jupiter got adopted. So thank you all for helping on that. That's great work, you know. So who we got here today? Ah, oh. uh, how you doing, sir? Good. Good. Hope you had a happy Thanksgiving. Oh, I'm still working. <laughs> working on the leftovers. Yeah. So who we got? We have Jeffrey. Jeffrey came to us as a stray on November 24th. So we've been uh, kind of shy right now, just trying to get to know you a little bit. But we haven't had a really uh, a good chance to uh, get to know him. And tonight, I really got to know him. He's uh, really affectionate and... He's not showing it right now, but he he warms up to you really quick, you know, and uh, loves treats. <laughs> oh, yeah. He loves treats. He's treat motivated. He knows how to sit for treats and uh, jump up and down for treats. But uh, he's a really good dog. A uh, uh, Maltese mix, his, his hair is really fine, so he's got to be really groomed a lot. I'm pretty sure that uh, with his coat, anybody can give him a good haircut and he'd be just fine. I've noticed a lot in the shelters, uh, animals start to shed a lot more there. That's when it's really It's because of their nerve and they're stressed out. You know, from all the other dogs barking, from them being locked up all day. So once you get them home, their demeanor starts to change and you can see a big improvement in their coat. But, uh, no, I didn't get any treats because, yeah. Come here, buddy. Come on. Come here, buddy. Come here. Why are you being like that? So, so it's, um, it's, it's not uncommon for these guys to be a little bit shy, and especially when you got a room full of people here. It's like, uh, you know, it's kind of like the relative that shows up the first time at Thanksgiving, and he, you know. Uh, the boyfriend that just shows up for the first time he's usually a little shy so that's what you got going here so Jeffrey's just a little bit shy um, uh, Jesse's uh, really good about finding good representatives uh, from the uh, shelter and um, with the with the work that, that you do and all the other volunteers over there do again we've had a 100 percent that's over 100 percent because people will show up and the dog will already be adopted and they, they pick up another one so we're doing pretty good on that. Uh, in that vein, we want to give you a little certificate to hang on your wall there uh, for, you. for all, your, all your work and dedication. Every month, doesn't matter what's going on, um, Jesse shows up over here. And we just want to thank you for your generous donation of time uh, and your caring uh, nature as a gift to the community and to these critters. So we just want to give you this, okay? Yes, all right, so, all right. Oh, okay. 
Right here. Why don't Jeffrey, can you come around the front here? There you go. And if you if you pick up Jeffrey or uh, or another puppy, pick, oh there you see, oh there you go. Okay everybody, uh, if you get Jeffrey or one of his uh, one of his roommates over there, where's Carrie at? Carrie, where are you hiding tonight? Is Carrie here tonight? Is she off tonight? Okay, but you you go over to uh, neighborhood services and you get a goodie bag full of uh, valuable uh, swag for the Dodgers. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't keep, I, I've got a few things I do any, besides that. Yeah. <laughs> we told him no. Yeah. yeah. Trying to find out. Uh, right here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, if you find out, let us know. We'll send them we'll something. Okay, there you go. Jesse and Jeffrey, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks. Thanks. Bertie, you're up. This is old what's his name that used to work here. <laughs> got it. You got two weeks left, Jim. So uh, we were doing our agenda review, and all of a sudden, an extra item showed up on there, and uh, uh, it's a little proclamation here that uh, the council did. Uh, we wanted to make sure that the community was aware um, of of our appreciation for what uh, Jim has meant to this city and to this community, and to the staff, and um, all the stuff he's uh, been having to work through, uh, babysitting us, you know, uh, and, um, and and just really keep it, keeping things on an even keel. I mean, it's a city manager's job is uh, making sure the boat doesn't hit the rocks, you know, uh, despite what we keep throwing in front of them. So uh, there's a whole bunch of whereas's on here, including um, uh, just recently, uh, Mr. Pertee uh, received the Larry Chimboli, everybody knows who Larry Chimboli is, right? The first mayor of Lancaster. And it was, yeah. Lancaster. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Armin, Armin, edit that out. Armin, edit that out. That's <laughs> because, because I know Bishop's here and he messed me all up, right? Larry Chimboli was a uh, assemblyman for Lancaster and Palmdale and happened to have been the first mayor of Palmdale. Uh, Right? Good recovery on that? Yeah. And, um, uh, but uh, uh, Larry was the epitome of uh, public service. And uh, when it came up that we had a, uh, an award for the, uh, uh, the division for the cities up here, um, I said, wait a second, you, you, you described the award, that, that's Larry. And so, so you have to basically meet, that's a, that's a threshold you have to meet, a lifetime of public service, 31 years in public service here for Mr. Perti. I think that's that just the sticking around cities that long is an accomplishment in and of itself. But um, with all the all those things that he's got cooking here, uh, all the stuff we've got coming down the pipe, all the stuff that's going to end up on JJ's desk uh, next month, uh, you know, it's it's really amazing. So uh, Jim just received the uh, Larry Chimboli Lifetime Service Award from the League of Cities uh, two weeks ago. So that was that was a pretty good accomplishment, right? Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. And uh, so, so Jim uh, started out in the private sector uh, and uh, worked for Simi Valley and uh, then came to Palmdale. Uh, he helped raise all of the standard and poor ratings every place he's been. Um, he's uh, worked through, uh, the, the, you know, we got the captain back there can tell us uh, our crime rate is almost at a historic low at this point. Uh, our, our crime rate in Palmdale is dropping precipitously. Uh, Every, every reporting period is dropping. Uh, and uh, th there's a reason behind that. And it's the it's a collective work of, of our deputies, uh, the administrative staff led by Jim and the policy direction by the council and getting that all implemented. And uh, so that, uh, but that doesn't happen without having somebody that can take, you know, five different people's vision, the captain's administrative needs and, and make it work. So it, it's, uh, we're down, um, and we ended up ranking as the 44th safest city in the United States, okay? And top 15% of fiscally responsible cities in California. The state audit just showed us as one of the most fiscally responsible cities around. 
and that's because of his leadership and, and his team that he's had out there. Um, Jim has, uh, uh, you know, we just, all, you, know, all, you see all the street lights out there. He's, he's a guy that brought that to us. Let's get these street lights replaced. Um, we've, we've managed to uh, open the first dog park. We've got, we've improved existing parks. We've got over $300 million in grants, tax credits, and financial resources for transportation, housing, water, energy, and quality of life issues. And that's what it comes down to, quality of life. Uh, that's why we all do this. Um, so now, therefore, I, Steve Hoffbauer, Mayor of the Palmdale, and on behalf of the entire City Council of the City of Palmdale, deem it an honor to extend this commendation to James Perti for his accomplishments and 31 years of service to the communities. So, here we go. <laughs> We're going to have a regular retirement party for him but, uh, at some point here. Um, but do you want to say something right now, Jim? This is going to be a long night, people. <laughs> Just to let you know. They made sure that my last council meeting, they're going to get every penny out of me. So what I have to do, or what I want to do now, is really thank the fantastic staff that we have uh, that is out there every day making the quality of life here in this community better. And the council that challenges me every day to do 110% for this community. And I think those things together, uh, plus the incredible sheriffs, uh, our deputies, uh, the fire department, you know, keeping us safe out there, all those things work together to make this the great community it is. And it's been an honor to serve it for the last four and a half years. Thanks, Jim. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Rachel Garcia. We got uh, J uh, let Richard. Do you want to come down and help me get this? So Richard's been uh, Richard's been the uh, mover on this issue right here, and uh, you know we got a celebrity here, right? Right? You guys know that. So uh, I'm gonna let um, uh, softball star and uh, from uh, Highland. Mess up it. I'm only allowed one. And that last one's got me good for about four meetings. Um, um, anyways, uh, I want to have Richard uh, sit here and uh, give us a little history, and he can do some of these whereas's here. But uh, Rachel, come on up here. This is Rachel Garcia, softball star. You may have seen her on TV. UCLA, right? Yes. Absolutely. Well, Rachel, uh, you, make, you make our city very proud. You came from here, you graduated from high school here, and you come back here and you coach the young women in softball. It's amazing. We need more of that example from successful people like you coming back to the community to give leadership, direction, and commitment. So the city of Palmdale makes this commendation, and I'm shaking over here. <laughs> yeah, well, this is exciting for me. Whereas Rachel Garcia, a student athlete on the women's softball team for UCLA, began her rise to success in her hometown of Palmdale, California. And whereas she began her highly successful high school career at Highland High School, where she was a four-year star pitcher and was named the 2015 Gatorade National Softball Player of the Year, Los Angeles Daily News Player of the Year, Golden League Most Valuable Player, and USA Today First Team All-America to name a few of her many awards. 
Whereas Rachel was recruited to attend UCLA on a softball scholarship and was an instant success, being named the National Fast Pitch Coaches Association National Freshman of the Year. And whereas she has been recognized as the Honda Sport Award winner for softball while being named the F NFCA and ESPNW's National Player of the Year. And get her. <laughs> like she did. Whereas Rachel led UCLA to the NCAA National Women's Softball Championship this year and was named Women's College World Series Most Outstanding Player, USA Softball Collegiate Player of the Year, and the winner of the prestigious Honda Cup. And whereas she was named to the 2018 and 2019 USA, <coughs> excuse me, USA Softball Women's National Team competed in the summer 2019 Pan American Games and was selected to play for the Team USA softball in the 2020 Summer Olympics. Now, <laughs> and so we can do our little bit here in this city to recognize your valuable contributions. So, whereas by displaying hard work tenacity, determination, and skill that she displayed throughout the years, as well as being committed to giving back to her community through service and outreach. Rachel Garcia is a role model for young student athletes everywhere and living proof that dreams can and often do come true. Now, therefore, me, Mayor, Mayor of the City of Palmdale, on behalf of the entire City Council, do hereby deem it an honor to extend this commendation to Rachel Garcia, and here's the thing, proclaim June 13th, 2020, as Rachel Garcia Day in Palmdale. So what happens on that We're gonna... It's opening day over there, right? Best of the West? So there's a, there's a big, uh, uh, that particular day was picked, and we, and Richard, Richard's been the, the mover behind this uh, for quite a while here, dealing with the, uh, talking with the family, um, her people, she's got people now, okay, so, so talking with her people, and uh, to, to get, yeah, and mom, is mom her people? Yeah, so, uh, and, um, but anyways, uh, so Best of the West, I think, right, Richard? Yep, Best of the West is going to be Best of the West Day at the, at the park, so she's going to be here, and she's going to be preparing for the 2020 Summer Olympics, so she's taken time off to be here for that day, so I, I expect that the entire city will be here to, to participate in that great event. Um, I want to mention Christine Garcia is very uh, helpful in selecting time and so on, and her dad. And I've got to mention that one of the outstanding citizens of, of Palmdale, Hernando Marroquin from Marroquin Enterprises. You see a lot of the McDonald's here in this valley belong to the Marroquin family. And, Mar and Hernando has been a big fan of yours. Huge fan. And really helped bring this about. So congratulations, Rachel. Thank you. And I know you're going to do us proud. <laughs> it's not often that I shake like I did just now. <laughs> well, it's a star. It's a star. Let's show her how we feel about her. Good job, man. So I, 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 I dragged Richard down here for that because he was, uh, he's been working on this thing for a few months now to get this put together, working with, the, with the, her family and her coaches and everybody to find the time and everything like that. So um, I try to, uh, th this is about uh, the community. So, and speak. But on a personal note, 
My granddaughter was playing for a softball team here, one of those travel teams. And you know her coach, and you would come in and assist with the coaching. And that was truly inspirational for the whole team, but in particular for my granddaughter. So thank you. But thank it is you a very personal much. connection, huh? So it's a big town, but it's a still a small town, right? So, all right. So we've got uh, JJ. Can you come up here and help me with this one? So, ladies and gentlemen, you remember the uh, the the a um, uh, few months back we uh, we got some grant funds and our local uh, basketball star switching switching games now uh, to uh, to basketball uh, and uh, from uh, Knight High School uh, Paul George now with the Clippers and he came out and the Paul George Foundation the Clippers guys uh, put a bunch of money into uh, redoing the, the uh, courts over at Marie Kerr Park and now that they got that figured out they've got a whole bunch more stuff happening and we've, we you're going to see a transformation in our east side parks and I'm going to let JJ tell you a little more about this. JJ? Thanks, Mayor. Uh, first off, it's great that Palmdale has two superstar athletes, right? And uh, you're carrying it. And thank you for coming back and impacting our youth. Uh, Paul George is trying to do the same thing. Uh, he hasn't forgot where he came from. Uh, we, we, Jim and I and, and staff, Kerry and her amazing staff and, and our public works have worked with them. Uh, the Paul George Foundation, the L.A. Clippers Foundation, to do the Murray Kerr Park. But he hasn't stopped. He has, uh, they have agreed. I think he was testing the water there. Well, uh, purposely, uh, they did the first two projects and uh, partnered with the 2K Foundation to have the courts uh, designed specially. They're doing the same thing uh, at Dominic Misari, the two full court Basketball courts that are there are uh, getting completely refurbished, but he's also building three new courts there that will have the first courts in Palmdale to be covered. Uh, you think, wow, that's, that's amazing, right? He's not stopping. By the end of this year, he's going to also, the, the two foundations in partnership with Paul, are going to upgrade the courts at Corson Park, and at Desert Sands Park. So you talk about a professional athlete, you see them on TV, uh, you can be proud that he's from Palmdale, but he hasn't forgotten that. He's gonna come back, and this is even the next step. So on the agenda is we are gonna proclaim December 29th, 2019, Paul George Day in the city of Palmdale. So uh, JJ pretty much covered uh, covered the um, all the whereases and everything in here. So um, so the 29th we'll probably have a ribbon cutting, some sort of an event, and uh, watch uh, watch uh, John Milner's uh, Facebook page, Instagram, all that other social media stuff on the uh, interweb there, right? Uh, whatever you guys are looking at, he's on it, and uh, he'll let you. He'll give you more details, tell you what's happening, when and where. Uh, but this is huge. We can't do it all. The city cannot do it all. And we can't expect y'all to do it all. And when we, can, when we can sit there and find somebody that has a heart like that to bring something back to the community, that's what's really important. So, uh, um, so December 29th, keep your eye out for that. And uh, JJ, who, uh, did we give this over to uh, Parks and Recs? So, thanks. And I got to tell you, so I got to hand it to uh, JJ. Public Works and the CIP team over there, Public Works, uh, for and well, and oh, what's his name? He used to work here, so, and Mr. Pertee, In all seriousness, um, they've been working their hearts out on this, and is that that and a couple of other projects that we can't tell you about right now, but are going to be cool when they happen. Um, it, it, this takes a lot of time and a lot of work, and you're going to be amazed at, as you watch some of these transformations occur. So, all right, okay, I think that's we're good. All right, so there you go. So, JJ, let's give JJ and the staff a hand for their, their work on this.
I don't know. That's fine. All right. all right. So after all that. All right. So um, new business item number 22. Who's got this item? Mr. Perti, is that you or is that Patricia? Patricia will present the staff reports on item 22-1. Good evening, Mayor and City Council members. Uh, City Manager Jim, Jim, sorry, James Perti announced he would be retiring as of December 30th, 2019. The City Council met in closed session to discuss a successor to Mr. Perti and agreed that Assistant City Manager John J. Murphy should be appointed as City Manager. The City Attorney, HR Manager, and Mayor negotiated a contract with Mr. Murphy, which is the employment agreement you have before you. The agreement is entered into with Mr. Murphy effective December 3rd, 2019. Between this effective date and December 30th, 2019, Mr. Murphy will have time to prepare and transition to the position of city manager on December 30th, 2019. Staff's available for questions. All right. Um, city, city Attorney, was there anything you needed to add to this, sir? over the last few months, um, as well as the discussions between the mayor, myself, Patricia, and um, uh, JJ. So okay. it, there's so, no uh, changes from that. Okay. All right. Um, public comment on this item? Do we have any speaker cards on this item? Yes, we do. We have... Um, see what the lady calls. Bon Blanco. Oh, Mr. Blanco, stand back up. <laughs> Good evening, uh, Mayor, City Council, City Attorney, uh, retiring City Manager, <laughs> and Madam City Clerk. My name is Juan Blanco, and we're here. I'm here with uh, members from Coffee for Vets, the veterans that uh, come to Coffee for Vets every Tuesday morning. Guys, stand up, please. Yeah, there you go. All right. And we're here. here in support of uh, J.J. Murphy for city manager for the city of Palmdale. J.J. as a veteran has also dedicated himself since he's been here to reaching out to the public. He has worked with the veterans. He has worked on many projects and he is a person that can help see this city into the future. We have a lot of confidence in his ability. I personally see the future moving forward. Mr. Purdy, uh, we appreciate everything that you've done. You've done a great job, and we believe J.J. can keep that moving forward into the 21st century. So I just wanted to say, and our veterans wanted to be here to support the uh, recommendation and apparently the selection of our new city manager, Mr. J.J. Murphy. So thank you very much for allowing me to speak, and thank you, veterans, for being here. And uh, Coffee for Vets is open to all veterans. Coffee for Vets is open for all veterans and their families every Tuesday morning. Crazy Autos on Avenue I, and the reason is because it's the largest store. Yeah, the son's veteran. And we will be there on Christmas Eve and on New Year's Eve. Uh, in the morning, not yeah. in the evening. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much. Right. So, ladies and gentlemen, take a look back there. These guys are all veterans of uh, different uh, campaigns. Uh, they've, uh, they've left a little meat on some foreign soil, right? Uh, but they're out there helping uh, helping our veterans, the old guys, and the new guys. So thank you for what you guys are doing out there. So, <laughs> Just had to, had, to, had to give you that little little plug there, as long as you were here. They do good work. Madam City Clerk, we have any other uh, speaker cards? Um, that was it. That was it. Okay. Anybody else that forgot to fill out a card? Okay. Are you coming this way, or are you? Yeah. You may. Yeah. Say, state your name, even though you you know the drill. My name is Kevin Sanders, and uh, I'm a Marine veteran, uh, active in the community, supporting veterans in many ways. And uh, I just like to say that uh, personal level, uh, JJ is one of the finest people I know. Longtime veteran, longtime veteran, and uh, career veteran, and. He just has so many good ideas and good things that he's going to do for this city. And I'm proud to call him a friend <clears throat> and proud to work with him. And give any support I can from the veteran community for you guys. Thanks, sir. And the city of Palmdale. Congratulations. Okay, council, anybody want to add, add to that? 
Well, I want to start by thanking Jim Perti uh, for his service to the city of Palmdale. Well, for finding you it. have certainly uh, made a positive difference in our city, in our residents, and uh, thank you for, for what you've done. Uh, you have really set us in the right direction, and I firmly believe that JJ is the right uh, choice for following what you started uh, in, in our city, Jim. Thank you for doing that. I have no doubt that uh, we have a great year ahead of us, and I have full confidence that JJ will um, make us go through the new year 2020 with a lot of uh, positive things for all of our residents. Uh, thank you, the council, for uh, supporting that um, selection. Thank you. You have anything? Okay. Yeah. Very quickly, uh, again, my thanks to you. I'm sure the entire city uh, appreciates the, the service that you presented to uh, to the city. Um, recognized by the League of Cities just a few days ago. Uh, that's an important award, and it was amazing to see all those different uh, jurisdictions recognize everything you've done. And uh, we're certainly looking forward to uh, Mr. Murphy, uh, John J. Murphy, and uh, comes to us uh, from Pennsylvania by way of New Mexico and uh, now in California, and the great city of Palmdale. You know that we look forward to your leadership and where we're going to take this city in the next few years. Thank you. Mr. Bishop? Yeah, I, I too wanted to thank uh, Jim Priti for his, his service here, uh, keeping the city on the right track during the last few years has been critical to ensuring a successful future for us. So thank you for your years of service and public service and uh, in your time here as well. I also uh, want to acknowledge JJ. He's done a great job since he's been here. He's a veteran. He's, he's been an asset to our organization and, and I appreciate him. The only thing I would have uh, is, is an issue with would probably be the, uh, the price tag of the contract would probably be a little bit higher than I was comfortable with after going back and looking at everything and, and seeing the compensation rates between cities. It was probably a little bit more than, than I expected, um, especially at a time when we're talking about um, the price of everything going up and, and being fiscally conservative is, is going to be critical to, the, to our, the health of our organization in the future. So that would probably be the only issue I would have with, uh, with a potential city, future city manager, JJ, at this time. And I discussed that in closed session with my council members. Yep, well, uh, and, and uh, you know what, we all, I think we all agree that, that uh, we all got a little sticker shock when we uh, were um, doing the homework on that. But we're, we're right in line with, we're, as we're finding with, uh, with the pay scales for people of that caliber with the amount of education, and he comes to us having been a city manager uh, in other cities. He came here for the opportunity for himself and his family, and uh, I think that uh, you know that 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 carries something with it. So, um, so uh, I just said I wanted to, I just yeah. want to mention, uh, and I spoke to the city attorney about that the city goes through an entire invest investigation, and you know no one's going to come forth unless they've been entirely investigated for whatever uh, they may be bringing to the table. So it's been uh, really clear that this gentleman, Mr. Murphy, brings great integrity and ethic to the city. And that's been confirmed by the, by the, the uh, yeah. checking by the city. Yeah, it does. he's got like above secret clearances and he's done stuff you can't even tell us about. So, uh, <laughs> JJ, well, uh, you know I think what? you've got a few family members here, don't you? You want to tell us who you got here tonight? And you know what's nice is that JJ actually lives here in our community. Yeah. Um, so he he is part of the public. So he, he lives and breathes and shops and works right here in the city. And that's that's a great... You'll see him hauling those girls yeah, around. Yeah, take so. a good look. You'll see him everywhere. So. With your wife. Say it. Tell me. Sure you get your wife. Bring the family up. Bring the family up. Why not? I'm uh, fortunate to have... 60% uh, of my family here. Uh, I have two older daughters who are in college, but these are my uh, three youngest. This is Reese. She's a fourth grader at Rancho Vista. This is Emma. She's a sophomore at uh, Quartz Hill. And this is Ryan. He's a freshman at Quartz Hill. And my wife, Colleen, is a uh, third grade teacher at Rancho Vista as well. And my mother-in-law, I guess, is working the... Uh, <laughs> 
iPod, <laughs> iPad. So, uh, you know, we are truly blessed. Uh, Jim, thank you. Uh, you've been a great partner, I, and I've learned a lot from you. The staff, I can't thank you enough. You embraced this Philadelphia kid and, and didn't make fun of my accent too bad. So I, I appreciate you. Uh, uh, you know, I, uh, I want to continue to be a, a collaborative servant leader for this organization, for this community. I promise to uh, use my legs to run through challenges, use my arms to open doors for people, use my mind to be creative, my uh, ears to listen, uh, and my mouth to communicate equally and share information equally with you and, and to the community. And I'm pledging to use my heart for our employees to show them how much I care and this community how much I care. So. I appreciate you, your confidence in me, all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, welcome aboard. To be here, right? Yeah. And, and just so right. you guys know, when he's late and he's tired, that's our fault. So, <laughs> <laughs> and you can ask Jim. We have a habit of um, working our city managers to death, so we'll have to always make sure we check JJ, make sure that he he's not overdoing it. So you guys can pick up the phone, call us, and let us know. Where, where, and these girls, you, have, you, your, your mother-in-law came into town for this, right? For for from uh, North Carolina, oh. uh, Joan. Uh, she is uh, my father-in-law. Uh, yeah. So, uh, but I will tell you, we've lived across the country in the military and in my public service in uh, local government, and my family loves Palmdale, and uh, they want to plant their flag. So thank oh, you. Cool. Did you, um, John, did you want to get a shot here before they, uh, you, you may not get all these guys in the same room at one time again. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> Juan's the backup photographer here, and Suzanne is the production yeah. assistant. Okay, we're trying. Okay, now hold on. Wait, more paparazzi <laughs> coming up here. <laughs> Good job, Juan. That was really nerve wracking. Hold on, here it goes. Okay. Matt check. Okay. Oh, wait, wait, no, 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 stab, no, more paparazzi. You have to get away that easy here. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, on this, on this item, the staff resolution is to adopt resolution number CC 2019-111 or 2019-112. Um, city, which which is the one we want? We're on 22.1. I'm right. looking at the wrong one. Dog on it. Um, uh, approve, approve agreement number A6843. Correct. Correct. Okay. Second. I got a motion and a second. Push our buttons. I'm sorry, I'm uh, moving the agenda around a little bit here. Do we hit a second? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Let's start, um, start voting. Did it work? That item carries uh, four to one tonight uh, with Mr. Bishop voting no. Okay. Uh, item, so being that we're on this item, uh, 22 new business. Let's go ahead and do 22.2, which is the comprehensive uh, audited uh, financial report. Uh, this uh, is, uh, tells you how our city is doing in the finances and how we're doing as far as the reporting of that's concerned. So, Our finance manager, Carlton Holmes, will be presenting this report. Council, thank you for the opportunity to work with you and to present the annual comprehensive annual financial report for the city of Palmdale. 
Uh, we're asking tonight that you accept the and file the independent auditor's unmodified clean report for the city's financial statements, the comprehensive, comprehensive annual financial report, or CAFR, for the year ended June 30th, 2019. The fiscal impact is none, and we have a short presentation for you. The City of Palm Bell's Comprehensive Annual Financial Report, or CAFR, for fiscal year 2018-19, in review. Our net position over the fiscal year, uh, over last year, has grown about $6 million from last year, $845,342,559, up to the current total net position of $851,320,000, uh, $851,320,058. Okay. Our <clears throat> net position defined is our net investment in capital assets, restricted net position, unrestricted and unrestricted net position for a total net position again of $851,320,058. The general fund revenues. Um, <clears throat> We have property taxes of $22.9 million, sales tax of $21.8 million, other tax totaled $11.9 million, 11 .9 million. licenses and permits were $1.9 million, charges for services were $6.2 million, and use of properties was just over $900,000. General fund expenditures is on the next slide. And we re we're reporting that $15.5 million was expended for general government, public safety is $28.2 million, public services $2.1 million, community development $600,000, cultural and recreation $9.3 million, health and welfare is not, oh, just over $900,000. Achieving fiscal health. One of the things that the fiscal or financial reports will show that it's an economic analysis or long-term decision-making that helps us achieve our current reporting status. We are transparent and believe in reporting the true cost of doing business. And we try to spend within our means, establish and maintain reserves, and understand that the budget versus actual is a variance that gives us an indication of how well we're planning and then utilizing the resources that are available. What CAFR stands for, it is a comprehensive annual financial report, but it also is a complete set of financial statements presented in conformance with generally accepted accounting principles. The reports are the results of business activity for fiscal year ended June 2019, and the components include two main sections, which are the transmittal letter and financial sections. And that's our report. Do you have any questions? Uh, so, thank you, Carlton. So we had a uh, audit committee meeting was last week. Yes, sir. And our audit committee reviewed the auditor's reports and got some additional clarification on some items. And uh, right at this point, uh, council, do you have, does the council have any questions at this point? 
I don't have any questions, I just have a comment. Um, on one of the slides, the charges for services, 6.2 million. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that that includes all the uh, fees for applications uh, pr to provide those services. The reason I mention that is because last month we had a, an item, uh, a fee resolution uh, presentation, uh, seeing that comparing what is the actual cost of staff uh, pre preparing applications for various things from development to uh, services in our parks and things like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure that that includes some of that uh, cost, the $6.2 million. Yes. And perhaps we are spending more on providing those services. Uh, my point is that we're getting some money from processing those applications and providing services, recreational services for our residents at parks and things like that. So I do see that we are, uh, while we may not be 100% recuperating the cost of providing those services, there is some uh, revenue uh, that comes in for providing those services. Right. Mm -hmm. um, that's just a comment I wanted to make mm -hmm. uh, because I was kind of surprised when I saw that uh, report last uh, month yep. uh, where processing a CUP would be like, mm -hmm. I don't know, six, seven thousand dollars or even more, mm -hmm. uh, which seemed to be outrageous uh, to me. Yep. Uh, just yeah, to well, I think, I, think the, I think the point they made during that and then between that and a follow up with this is, is sure. that yeah. how much are we subsidizing it yeah. for okay. and yeah, how, much do we wanna, how much do we want to do that? So, anybody else on the council have any comments? I, I want to thank the audit committee. That was uh, Ms. Betancourt, correct? Yes. And uh, Mr. Bishop on the audit committee mm -hmm. to help uh, uh, um, put, the, uh, put the auditors through the uh, bill, right? So, and um, any other comments? Mr. Uh, did you have something to say? Just a couple of things I want to mention. One is that uh, even after all our expenses and depreciation of our existing assets, which are about 644 million of that total, nearly a billion dollars in, in total financial assets the city has, uh, we ended the year six million dollars to the good, uh, including writing off uh, the, the $10 million uh, power plant permits that uh, once we shut down the, the application for the power plant, uh, we had to take a $10 million loss because we had an asset on our books that that 10 million we had spent many years ago was eventually going to be repaid. And so we were able to uh, absorb that, uh, absorb all the depreciation on our assets, uh, well, along with the investment that we were making in our assets, uh, and end up 6 million to the positive. And operation wise, uh, we were just about uh, as close to zero as you could get. We were about $190,000 in general fund to the negative on a $75 million amount, so it's less than 0.1%. And so uh, really a good year this year of uh, was watching our fiscal health, setting us up for next uh, the next several years. Uh, we're putting money aside in different reserve funds uh, for everything from vehicles to computers to rainy day money uh, and even additional money to the pensions that most cities are unable to do. And so we've set the city up uh, for a really good path going forward. Not to say there aren't a few headwinds out there, um, and the, the council already knows what those headwinds are. I'm not going to uh, keep pushing on those. But uh, all in all, a you know a very good run on our budget, uh, and we've been very fiscally conservative going forward. We have some big decisions to make and investment priorities, and we, but we've got the wherewithal to do that. Great. Okay. Maybe we'll see if the public's got any comments. Okay. Okay. Carlton, we can, yeah. yeah. We'll do. Did, did we have any speaker cards in this item? We did not. Did, did anybody forget to fill out a card that needed to comment on this item? I'm not seeing any. Okay, uh, council, we good here, or we get a, uh, a motion to uh, uh, to accept and file the independent auditor's unmodified clean report for the city's financial statements for the year ending June 30th, 2019. Motion to accept and file the report. Second. Who pushed the buttons? Oh. Okay, that passes with a five zero. Thank you very much. Okay, we're going to go back uh, to the uh, Wrigley scheduled agenda, as I say. Flip back here. Okay, I need a waiver of full reading of resolutions and ordinances, please. So moved. So, second. Okay. 
Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Do we have any public comments on consent yes, calendar? Yeah, I think it's good for public. No, he got it. He, he jumped, jumped back. That's where I'm going right now. Jumped yeah, okay. yeah. Um, public comments on consent calendar, non-agenda items. Any items, calendar items number 14.1 through 14.26 or non-agenda items. If you have an item uh, to speak on, City Clerk, we have any of those uh, items? Um, yes, we do have um, someone who has the ability to speak. Okay. That is Heather Barden. Heather? Oh, which item was that? Uh, it's a non-agendized item. Okay. I just wanted to let everyone know that the uh, homeless count is coming up. It's January 23rd, uh, 2020 in this area. It'll be at 6 a.m. And everyone can register at theycountwillyou.org. Um, the 2019 homeless count, we had 3,293 homeless people in the Antelope Valley. The homeless count is really important because it does... Um, help determine where the money goes and what communities get that money. So I do want to encourage everyone to volunteer that can for the homeless count. Again, that's January 23rd, 2020. And you can, can find information at? Theycountwillyou.org. Again? Theycountwillyou.org. Okay, okay. theycountwillyou.org. Yes. Um, and then one more thing. I also wanted to let everyone know about LA Hop, which is a Los Angeles homeless outreach portal. That's... Um, a tool that anyone in the community can use if they see anyone experiencing homelessness on the street, and that will prompt a professional outreach worker to come and see that person. So you can go to lahop.org and put in a request for a professional outreach to come and engage. So that's a great way that the community can get involved. If they see someone, they just put in the location and a description of the person, and then outreach will come and engage them. Excellent. That's the whole key is finding the right resources for people. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have anything else there, uh, City Clerk? Yes, we do. We have Louis Luzania. Louis Luzania? Um, I, I was here last month uh, regarding CBD and uh, municipal codes. After I had talked to um, Assistant uh, City, what is it, Attorney um, Noel Dorn. Uh -huh. And um, we both discussed that if it was possible, if we can ask the city council and the mayor if um, we can actually get the city municipal codes to either change or maybe um, create its own municipal code for CBD, um, different, differentiated from uh, cannabis and marijuana. Um, that's all I wanted to ask the council. Thank you. I think the city attorney's office is doing that research right now. Okay. So I just talked with them about that the other day after you were in there. So we're looking at it, and, we come, and I'm sure they'll, they'll brief the council, figure out where we want to go with it then, okay? Sounds good. Thanks for bringing that to our attention, sir. I appreciate it, council. Okay, Thank yes, sir. City clerk, anybody else? Anybody else that uh, needed to speak on either a consent calendar item or a non-agendized item? Good evening, my name is Marcia Furman. Sorry, a little bit of a cold. Several weeks ago, I noticed on Facebook a personal account sharing a request for volunteers for several committees being formed by our city. I'd never noticed this type of recruiting before. Like many folks, I'm signed up for several city notification sites, email, and Facebook. I will admit, I could have missed the um, official requests posted on the city sites for these volunteer positions. I hope that is the case. In the world we live in, posting on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and other sites reach only those who sign up for their personal distribution. Sharing posts moves news around with the requirement of friendship imposed. I hope I just missed the city's official posting of these committee positions, as all our citizens can sign up or like the information sites offered by the city staff. Relying on personal social sites does an injustice, not by expo does an injustice by not exposing our city's business in a professional manner and venue. On another note, I would like to thank Mr. Party 
for choosing Palmdale to wrap up his many years of public service. Jim, you have made yourself accessible and inviting. Being approachable is so important when citizens feel they can be involved in their city's growth. You have also exposed Palmdale to colleagues <coughs> and in doing so have expanded the possibilities of our future. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Just send me an email. There's no official, nothing's official yet. So, thank you. Obviously, you found out about it. Um, anybody else? I have no Okay. Idea. All right, so uh, City Council, any items on the consent calendar that uh, you want to pull for discussion or I need a motion to approve it? I'll move motion. Approve. And second. Okay, I've got multiple motions and seconds. Whatever shows up on the computer wins. <laughs> It's a race to the buttons, all this electronics today, folks. It's, uh, I, guess I, got this. I know, we need a, that's why we got a young guy here to help us with this stuff. So. Any of that work? There it is. <laughs> Did we freeze it up? We have a motion and a second. There we go. Um, and here we go. Okay. So let's start voting. That passes. Five zero. Thank you very much. So I'll move on to. Uh, I think we have. Yes, housing authority meeting. I need uh, Mr. Brown and did, uh, it was Chris. Was Chris able to make it tonight? Is Chris here? There she is. Okay. So what we're doing now, folks, we've got our uh, Palmdale City Housing Authority meeting. Welcome. Thanks for being here tonight. And uh, City Clerk, can you uh, do an official roll call for our Housing Authority, please? Chair Hofbauer. Here. Vice Chair Bishop. Here. Commissioner Bettencourt. Here. Commissioner Carrillo. Here. Commissioner Loa. Here. Commissioner Brown. Here. Commissioner Fragasson. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. So we have a... Uh, Public comments on a housing authority consent calendar. Um, the consent calendar is item number 18 on your agenda. It's the uh, annual financial report, housing authority um, annual report to the California Health and Safety Code pursuant to their uh, regulations, and uh, minutes from uh, a meeting of uh, sep September 3rd. Uh, was there any uh, speaker cards on this, uh, Madam Clerk? No? Did anybody want to speak on uh, the consent calendar for the housing authority that forgot to fill out a card? Okay, seeing none. Um, housing commissioners, any comments on this item? Okay, Mr. Brown? No. Count, rest of the council? No. No. Um, I guess directors or commissioners on this? No? All right, then I need a motion from uh, maybe one of the commissioners can give us a motion. Okay, I have a motion and I have a second to approve the consent calendar as comprised. Okay, hang on, we'll get the screen up here. This actually has to be a voice vote. Oh, okay, we haven't got that up there. Okay, so I have a motion and a second. Uh, and all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. So, believe it or not, that's it for the housing authority. <laughs> it took longer to, longer to get you up here. I heard, Happy yeah. Holidays. Yeah, these uh, work. Okay, well, good. Those working pretty good, Mr. Brown? Real good. Yeah, okay. yeah. Good. good. Thank you for here. Oh, enjoying it. Oh, very good. You're probably hearing things you don't even want to hear. <laughs> I don't know what I've been missing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Well, it's important to have our citizen representatives on these boards, and they do a really good job on following up on housing authority issues. Okay. So we're... Uh, Adjourning the Housing Authority meeting, and we're returning to the City Council meeting, and we're on item number 20. So we have uh, appointments. Um, so is there an AQMD? Uh, any comments or suggestions, or keep it as is? I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy as it is where I'm at. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other comments now? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the Mosquito Abatement District. We got Mr. Persons. I'm good with keeping him there. He's expressed interest in remaining there. I'd just like to make sure we get a report coming up here. So any, any objection there? No. 
Okay, Transit Authority? On, on this one, I'm going to recuse myself for having done business with uh, Transit Authority and any potential future business I may have. Okay. All right, so I got... Uh, uh, anybody else? Uh, get... Okay, I'll leave that one there. All right, come on back. <laughs> <laughs> got to follow the rules, you know? Otherwise, you get in trouble. Uh, Contract Cities Association. Anything, any changes on that? No. No standard? No. Okay. Audit committee. Do we have our uh, our citizen rep make it or not make it for that one? Yeah, she was there. No, she attended. Mm -hmm. she, does she indicated that, that her situation changed and she's able to continue functioning there? Okay. All right. Uh, is Ms. Norris, are you here? Is she here tonight? Okay. So, uh, I had a comment there to, to advertise for a spot, but currently it's working out. And with her background, if she's able to attend, I think that's going to be the key there. Okay? Investment Oversight Committee, anybody want to uh, make any changes on that? No. So right. rotating council member, do we need to rotate? So, um, well, I think the city clerk just makes that call for whoever's up next when the next meeting comes up with it, right? Um, on the investment. Right. So, anybody else want to uh, take a shot over there at the Investment Oversight Committee this time? It meets just maybe a couple times a year. Do you want to stay there, Mr. Wall? This way. Okay. Is she's fine staying there? Yeah. All right. Do you do you want? Well, I got a couple of things I'm going to suggest. Maybe do you want to do investment because you're on the audit committee right now? Would that make sense for you? I think it would. Yeah, do you, are you okay with that, Richard? Sure. Would that be good yeah. for you? Okay. okay, I think, yeah. Okay, now, so here's here's one of my thoughts here. On High Desert Corridor, well, let me skip that if I can for just a minute, because I, I, I got a thought I want to make here. League of Cities, anybody want to make any changes on that? Well, I did apply for one of the positions. Let's I'm going to keep working on it. I got a state board meeting up in right, uh, yeah. Northern California this week, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to advocate for you on that, sir. Okay. So um, they had set some pretty tough deadlines, and mm -hmm. we just was impossible to make that. Uh, sanitation, any any reason to make any changes on that? I don't no, think so. I'm good as alternate. I'm, I work locally, so it's easier for me to fill in if you guys need me to. Right, what about, uh, um, let me, let's jump real quick here for recycled water. Okay, um, on, that? okay on that? Okay. Okay. Um, okay on that. Okay. And um, on Southern California, uh, well, I want to take the transportation ones as a lump here. So if you bear with me for just a moment, I didn't get through the ones that are had little discussion on. Um, United States Mexico Sister Cities Association. Um, with, That's correct. Yeah, I think I think we heard consensus yes. to keep yes. things as they are. All right, uh, sister cities with uh, over 15, nearly 60 percent of our community from uh, the uh, um, uh, from Mexico. There, that's uh, a lot of a lot of motivation to be on that. Um, myself, uh, Mr. Carrillo, Mr. Bishop are on that. Mr. Lowe, would you like to be at? I you'd express some interest to be. Uh, also, this is one of those where there's no num no necessary number. I think all of us can be. Well, then make me uh, alternate too. Okay, we'll put well put everybody on it then. So, but I think that it's important for us to. Uh, uh, I think there's uh, um, quite a bit of quite a bit of interaction that can occur there. So, all right, and um, I uh, you're on the um, citizens advisory committee up at the up there. You good with that? Uh, anybody want any, uh, anybody else want to? Uh, you, I don't think you've ever really needed a alternate on that. No, I was so. trying to go. Yeah, I know. Okay. Just, if there's going to be a... But you guys can come with me, you know. You yeah. don't have sure. to. Sure. Neither. If there's going to be a need for you to be there, just, I just need notice. Yeah. I just need notice. Yeah. So. You just can't wear blue jeans there. Just, just, can't wear blue jeans. just don't wear blue jeans. No, I know. I know. I know. <laughs> yeah, blue jeans Not that there's prison. any story. Trust me. There's no story <laughs> of being at the prison in blue jeans. So... Um, all right, so here's the deal. What I'd like to do is, uh, I, and uh, I individually talked this over, uh, and, I, and now we get the chance to talk about it uh, uh, in general here. We're trying to, um, I think we have to uh, make a couple of uh, uh, little changes here. I think that 
well, one of the things that um, is important is be able to maintain consistency with the huge transportation things we've got coming up. We need to have consistency in the meetings and uh, at the at the regional level as well. Um, and I know that uh, I try to I try to help when I make these suggestions to the council. Try to consider what everybody's uh, personal commitments, work commitments, potential conflicts, and things like that are. So here's what I would like to do. And if you just bear out, bear with me for a second and 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 hear me out here, what I would like to do is um, on the uh, uh, North uh, Los Angeles County Transportation Coalition. Uh, right now, we've got three council members on there. The problem we have with that is is that we can never talk. Uh, state law prevents us from getting together because we create a Brown Act problem. Every other agency has made a point of not having three council members on there. They either have one or two, and they talk, they're able to strategize, they're able to debrief, and we can't do that. So um, I've got a couple of community members that have expressed interest in participating in that capacity, <clears throat> and um, I've spoken to uh, Mr. Blanco, uh, Juan Blanco, uh, from the Coffee for Vets. He's on our Citizens Advisory Committee for the General Plan, Mr. Hunt as well. <clears throat> but I've also spoken with uh, Bart Avery. Um, in assessing where everybody's at on this thing, I'd like to recommend and ask for the council's concurrence uh, that for the, um, uh, uh, for the, um, it can either be the business rep or rep at large and we can move everybody around. But uh, I'd like to ask that perhaps for the, for business rep that we can ask uh, Mr. Bart Avery to fill that. He's been going to all of the uh, station area planning meetings as a committee member for a couple of years now, and he's also been on the, the airport committee and been going to a lot of these meetings with his background at the FAA. He's been very invaluable over there. And I think that now that all these things are starting to come together, we're going to have to be providing that guidance from the and from a policy perspective from the council, and we need that. We need to be able to have that that ability to have those uh, be able to caucus on those things. So and there's no conflict between the different positions that he's holding. Right. So we'll, so on uh, North Los Angeles County. Uh, it would be myself, um, uh, Mr. Carrillo, as the um, uh, as the alternate. Uh, we can make uh, um, um, Mr. Avery our the business rep, and then uh, uh, Mr. Loa will stay on as a uh, as a rep at large. And this is nothing personal. This is just a matter of this is just how we how, how can we do business over there? Why and we're, we we're, we're really getting why left don't behind. Why would Blanco be the representative at large? Well, we can only we only get one. Only get one. We only get one. Yeah. Yeah. So. Is everybody okay with that? Richard, did you want to stay on a rep at large? Okay. Okay. All right. So that'll be it. So city clerk, did you get that? Okay. All right. And then um, for uh, High Desert Corridor, to keep that consistency with, with that, um, and that, and that needs to be a council member on that rep. Uh, so I think Mr. Loa can move in at High Desert Corridor, and then we're maintaining that, that transportation um, connection uh, between the uh, NCTC and the um, High Desert Corridor JPA. So are we, are we okay with that one? When does the High Desert Corridor meet? Le uh, when does When's the meetings? Um, it's as needed. Oh. But I think some of these are going to start coming up probably a little more. Okay. Uh, just because with Virgin sure. making a connection, okay. I think we're going to see more meetings on, on all of these next year. So, so, so for that position there's only one alternate for something that important uh yeah we could have two alternates uh i don't think there's any i'd like to be provision on that if there's a for that availability. so and a second alternate I'd yeah well you know what actually our provision allows for all council members to be an alternate we just have to have a first alternate that they can okay. you know they gets the call first okay so we'll keep that all in mind i know mr bishop wants to keep his finger in the in a pie on that as well so i think that you know we'll, we'll keep, you know we'll make those calls and, and, and okay. When available, then we good with that. So I'm going in as uh, alternate. Yeah, and I just record. Yeah. So what was the change? So Mr. Lola will be the first alternate on that. Then the bishop would be Lola, and then the rest of us would be the backup. And then, um, and then, uh, then the only other one that's left open there. It's not on the agenda right now, but I'd like to bring it back uh, before the NCTC meeting uh, because. We need to maintain that transportation consistency, and um, and just looking at 
again, with between personal commitments and, and work schedules, um, uh, I'd like to uh, ask um, Mr. Loa for NCTC to confirm him as the uh, other transportation rep at, uh, at SCAG. I know he's wanted to get involved there. And then mm -hmm. uh, and I know Mr. Carrillo has been the, with the CEHD yes. stuff down there. And I'm going to continue to try to advocate to try to get you on the, the state league uh, okay. position on that one there. So is everybody okay with that? Yes. Okay. City Clerk, did you get that? Does that, that all make sense? So for SCAG, you're... We want to bring that back. And I think we need to bring that back according to the city attorney because... I apparently didn't articulate that for the agenda, so we need to have that, just to bring that back to be confirmed at the next meeting, because we have to send a letter over to NCTC, and then NCTC has to send it to SCAG. Okay? All right. Great. Um, okay. So on, so that, that takes care of those on um, 20.02. On uh, Mayor Pro Tem rotation, yes. Oh, okay. All right. So. Okay. All right. So I have a motion on the changes that were made. So moved. Second. We got second. Okay. Um, do you, is that an item on the? So yes, it is. So Richard Loa and um, Laura Bettencourt both were second. Great. So when you thought that we were only here for a couple hours a month, okay, you have no idea. We have a first and second. Please okay. start voting. Oh, where's that? What? what is this? We got something else on the screen here. Yes, it's all of them. Okay, so being that the screen won't move, we'll just do a voice vote and you can clear this. And Okay, so all in favor of the item? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carries unanimously. Um... Okay, we have um, Mayor Pro Tem appointment. Uh, do we have any public comments on this item? Item number 20.2. Okay, Council? Um, I'd like to, uh, I, I really enjoyed my, my term as Mayor Pro Tem. I'd like to stay on at the, uh, as Mayor Pro Tem since I work local and I've been very engaged at a lot of the events and and made myself available to the community. I'd like to stay on if the council so pleases. Well, I, I would. I would like to. I, I would like to. Work, I appreciate the work that you've done, um, and uh, I'm trying to engage some other council members. I've, you know, poked around and asked, you know, levels of interest, and I appreciate that. But I'd like to. I'd like to to appoint uh, uh, Mr. Loa for this next term. So. Um, so I'll make that a motion. I'll second it. Okay. All right. Uh, so we have a motion and a second. Is it a voice or, vote or? I, I think they're still trying to unfreeze the machine, so I so think we're going to keep it going. There's a motion and a second to appoint um, Richard Loa. There we go. Okay. I don't, I don't, we're still, our screens are still. Our, 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 yeah, it's, it's, um, okay, just, uh. All right, we'll do a voice vote on this. Uh, all in favor of the motion, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries unanimously. Can, well, I, can I make a clarification on the reappointments of someone that always serves as a mayor pro tem? We changed that right. ordinance um, so that everybody in the council has a chance to rotate. Uh, you know. it's, not, oh, no, we no, no. It, it's, it's a majority vote. Okay. Okay. We took away the rotation. Okay, okay. Yeah. okay. But I think this we got the ability that I know that when I spoke to Ms. Betancourt, she'd expressed interest, but she's got some work commitments coming up right okay. now. And uh, so I, I think her time will be coming up here, and we kind of discussed that option as well. So um, okay. I think we're all going to be good. And I, I want to thank personally thank Mr. Bishop for his hard work and dedication. Is uh, This is a guy that you, you, you can't have a community event without having him in the picture with us. So uh, I want to thank you for, for your, your work on that. Wow. And I fully expect that we're going to be engaging a lot this next year. We've got so much going on. So oh, we will be. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much, man. You're Thanks. Welcome. Thanks. Um, okay, so we've got a public hearing now. Uh, item 21.1. And I think this is going to be public works. Come on down.
Good Chuck evening, Heffernan, Mayor. Director yes. of Public yes, Works. Sir. Chuck Heffernan, Director of Public Works. Uh, Mayor and City, Member of City Council. Um, item 21.1 is the adoption of resolution number CC 2019-82, which is a resolution of the City Council of the City of Palmdale to approve the engineer's report for the annexation of assessor's parcels that make up the uh, Iglesia de Cristo Miel uh, and to order the collection of assessments within the assessment district for the fiscal year 2021. Did I do that? Okay, so uh, <laughs> this is uh, this was a partner to uh, item that was in the consent agenda, which was the first, first two steps. This is the final step where you actually, we open the, uh, the ballot and uh, so, okay, and this is, um, um, do you want to read the resolution, sir? Or, or you can have somebody. Am I else? supposed to read this, Matt? Okay. It wasn't, somebody wasn't clear, sorry. There you go. Okay. Okay. Resolution CC 2019-082, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Palmdale Approving the engineer's report, ordering the annexation of assessor's parcel numbers 3014-010-004, 3014-010-005, and 314-010-006, Galicia de Cristo Miel, located at 1675 East Avenue Q15 into the City of Palmdale Street Light Maintenance Assessment District Number 1, Annexation 2003-044, and the levy and collection of assessments within such annexation for fiscal year 2020-2021 and confirming diagrams and assessments pursuant to the provisions of Part 2 of Division 15 of the California Streets and Highways Code as provided by Article 13D of the California Constitution. So what this is is that's a it's a new development that's uh, correct going this in there, the, and this is in order to get the street lights to be able to get them installed and paid for. It, yes, it is right, correct. And uh -huh. this is a result of Prop 218. So we this used to just be done over the counter, uh, but the state knew a better way to do it. So here we are. So uh, city clerk to open a ballot. the ballot was not voted and therefore does not pass. After all that, all you had to do was check a box. So we need and to talk. And, and the, the part about that is we can't prepare for that because it's a sealed envelope. Sure. Yeah. So, so if we have a chit chat with them and then uh, maybe this can come back because I know they have the timelines. We have a <laughs> workshop come up in two weeks. Maybe we can revisit this on then. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. We'll hope so. Okay. Yeah. All right, well, yep, sure I know that, that suspense was killing you, right? <laughs> <laughs> These are street lights, right? Mm -hmm. All right, well, lacking the, lacking a ballot, it dies, and we'll move on to the next item. Um, public hearing and proposed resolution number 2019-086 for adoption. Mr. Heffernan, you're up again. Yes, this is the a similar resolution approving an engineer's report annexation of assessor's parcels that uh, make up the global assisted Living uh, before we go too far, Becky, associates. can we just open that to make sure that we can continue yeah. here? Yeah, because these these I statement, I know so these these big things. This will make sure to keep continue. The the ballot was was marked. And yes. Okay. It passed. Okay. Okay. <laughs> continue, sir. I I will read. See. Okay, I will read the resolution. Yes. Thank you for trying to protect my voice. Yes. Okay. Uh, City Council Resolution Number CC-2019-086, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Palmdale approving the engineer's report, ordering the annexation of assessment assessor's parcel number 3015-011-035, Global Assisted Living Desert Senior Associates, generally located south of East Avenue Q, north of, e of Avenue Q3, east of Orchid View Place and west of 15th Street East, into the City of Palmdale Street Light Maintenance Assessment District Number 4 as Annexation 2019-184 and the Levy and Collection of Assessments 
within such annexation for fiscal year 2020-2021 and confirming diagrams and assessments pursuant to the provisions of Part 2 of Division 15 of the California Streets and Highways Code and as provided by Article 13D of the California Constitution. All right, so uh, having like removed all the suspense, the clerk uh, announced that the ballot was marked and in the affirmative. We're good? Yes, it was. Okay. Uh, so we have to have a public hearing and receive any testimony. Anybody um, want to speak on uh, street lights uh, around the senior living facility? Move to close the public hearing. Second. Okay. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, so we have a uh, staff recommendation to adopt resolution number CC 2019-086. We need a motion. Motion to adopt such resolution. Second. Second. Okay. Thank you. All right. All right, I have a motion and a second. And we can put, we can push that button. And that item carries 5-0. Thank you very much, Mr. Heffernan. Okay, we have uh, item number 21.3, public hearing and reviews review of proposed ordinance number 1533 for adoption. Re staff reference, uh, City Attorney <coughs> Matt DeSazy. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, m members of the City Council. My name is uh, Drew Pletcher. I'm uh, Deputy City Attorney. Um, <clears throat> tonight I have before you a uh, ordinance number 1533, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Palmdale, amending Chapter 17.20.030 of the Palmdale Mun Municipal Code relating to the permits required for temporary sale of alcoholic beverages. In, in, uh, in short, this is really just a, a cleanup ordinance. Um, as currently written, um, applicants seeking to obtain a permit for the temporary sale of alcoholic beverages are required to provide a liability, quote, liability insurance with a, quote, al alcohol endorsement and name the city of Palmdale as the additional insured. Um, under the proposed ordinance, this is a cleanup that specifically states that applicants are to provide a, quote, commercial general liability and, quote, liquor legal liability insurance, in addition to naming the city and its various agencies um, as additionally insured. And what we found is that there's two distinct, two distinctions between uh, the types of insurance you can, you can uh, provide for alcohol establishments. Host liquor coverage, which would be for the permitting um, businesses that essentially do not serve, sell, or manufacture alcohol, but somehow have it served on their premise. Um, staff was finding that applicants were coming with host liquor coverage. That was incorrect. We need to specifically, that's why we set out to specifically uh, change the ordinance to um, mention liquor, liquor legal liability insurance, which is for the sale of alcohol. That, um, and staff finds that the proposed update will benefit public health, safety, and welfare by ensuring that applicants are providing the proper insurance necessary for these type of permits. And I'm, I'm available for any questions, should uh, council have any. Council, any, uh, anything at this point? Can I have any other question? Um, is there an additional cost to the applicants? When they, is, is there gonna be a difference in the application cost uh, for these insurances? No, there's, there is It'll no. Be the same? Yes, that's correct. City Clerk, do we have any uh, public speaker cards for this item? No, we do not. No? Did anybody want to speak that didn't <clears throat> fill one out? Okay, uh, so I need a motion to close public hearing. So moved. Second. Motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we have a staff recommendation to adopt ordinance number 1533. Move to approve. I have a motion. Second. Mayor. Yes, sir. Did you do a voice vote to introduce the ordinance? Yes, they did a, they did a voice vote. Well, let's make sure we did. Uh, I have a voice vote to in introduce ordinance number 1533. I need a motion. I'll make a motion. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Any opposed? Okay. So, and now we're, our motion is to adopt the ordinance. 
And we have, do you have show motion a second? We do have a first and a second. It okay. was um, Richard Lowe okay. and Austin Bishop. Very good. All right, as soon as it comes up, we'll uh, go ahead and start voting. That item carries 5-0. Thank you. Uh, we have a item 21.4. Public hearing and review of proposed ordinance number 1535 for adoption. Uh, staff reference, City Attorney DeSazy. I got a feeling somebody else is going to handle the report. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the ordinance before you is ordinance number. This is Mr. Noel Duran. Mr. Noel Duran, Assistant City Attorney. There you uh, go. Thank you, Your Honor, members of the City Council. Before you this evening is ordinance number 1535, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Palmdale amending section 5.04.670 of the Palmdale Municipal Code, prohibiting the sale of flavored electronic cigarette products. And if we could get a voice vote to read it into the record, that would be great. I need a motion. Okay. motion. Introduce it. Okay. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Go ahead, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the United States Food and Drug Administration has banned through the authority granted to it by the Family Smoking Prevention and Tobacco Control Act the sale of certain flavored tobacco products. Um, and they've also taken steps to extend that ban on flavored tobacco products to electronic cigarette products. However, those efforts have recently stalled. Uh, to address this perceived gap, several states and local municipalities have adopted bans on some or all flavored tobacco products. Um, the reasoning for this is that according to a 2018 National Youth Tobacco Survey, 3.6 million kids are currently using electronic cigarette products, and that's up approximately 1.5 million from the prior year. Um, one of the, the main reasons that youth are using e-cigarettes is the availability of appealing flavors. Um, the, the majority of the flavors that are used by youth are fruit-flavored products, um, and candy flavors. In addition, they also use uh, mint and menthol flavors. Um, however, advocates of electronic cigarettes claim that they are an effective smoking cessation tool, or at the very least, are a less harmful nicotine delivery system than traditional tobacco products. Um, tobacco, mint, and menthol flavors are flavors that are uh, commonly found in traditional tobacco products. And access to these flavors and flavored electronic cigarette products may facilitate the transition away from traditional tobacco products. Uh, proposed ordinance 1535 would amend the Palmdale Municipal Code to prohibit, to excuse me, to prohibit the sale of flavored electronic cigarette products, except for those flavors that would maintain access to potentially less harmful products uh, for adult smokers desiring to transition away from traditional tobacco products. Uh, and those traditional flavors are tobacco, mint, and menthol. Uh, in addition, while we're under the hood on uh, this section of the Municipal Code, Proposed Ordinance 1535 uh, would resolve an existing ambiguity and make clear uh, that retailers must be 18 years or older to sell tobacco products. I'm available for any questions. That would, when we say tobacco, that would also include vaping and electronics because our we have another section of the code that lumps them together under that term, correct, sir? That's correct. Okay. All right. So um, uh, we're going to open a public hearing and receive testimony. Um, anybody from the public wish to, do we have any uh, speaker cards on 21.4? Yes, we do. Okay. Who do you have? Randy Havara. Randy? been open for five years. I have passed every single decoy test that I could, uh, that you could, you know, <laughs> send my way. So pretty much if you were to take out the tobacco, the flavored vape juice from smoke shops, that's detrimental. This is like 50% of the smoke shop's business. What would you be left with? They said that the CAFR thing was a uh, $21.8 million in sales tax. How much of that was from flavored vape juice? So, I mean, we can all agree that, you know, minors should not be smoking, 100%. Everybody agrees on that. But also, if you're going to, if you're going to punish the retailers and responsible adults for something that can be like, I don't know, like, 
seen overseen by the, the children's parents, that's also not you know not a good idea either. Uh, you know, uh, in my smoke shop, I have we own convenience stores, smoke shops, whatnot. Taking this out of a liquor store, that makes sense. That's fine. They have a million products to rely on, gas stations as well. But a tobacco store relies heavily on this. So you would lead to a lot of loss of income, loss of employment. You can't hire, keep all your employees if, if you lose money, right? Doesn't make sense. Also, what about the people who have long leases? They rely on this, you know? Instead of banning, you should do, we should do something like work together. For example, at my smoke shop, I, have a, I don't allow anybody under the age of 21 inside. They have no business in there. I have a sign on the door, 21 or only, I know it's, what is it, 18? Something like that, uh, to sell. But everybody in my, in my smoke shop is 21 years or over is allowed to enter. I think we should do something like that instead of just banning it. That was just create a black market, and we know from prohibition that was just a bad idea. Right. So um, if you guys are willing all to work together or do something, I'm more than open to it. Uh, yeah, that's all I would like to say. Thank you guys very much. Thank Appreciate you very much. It. Do you have city clerk? Danny Havara. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, council members. My name is Danny Havara. I am a resident of Palmdale City. We do own and operate three tobacco shops within the city. <clears throat> Multiple issues arise from the adoption of the, uh, the municipal code. First of all is the clean cut, <coughs> black and white understanding of what is allowed and what is not. We rely on employees to facilitate following the law, and sometimes it's hard if it's not clear within the terminology of the rule itself. This is clearly not, there is no distinction between mint or menthol. However, when we get to doing business, there is a wide distinction between both. Uh, <clears throat> it says all styles of electronic. There are many styles that do incorporate the actual use of traditional tobacco, not necessarily the juices or the electronic or the jewels or whatever it is that is online or that is causing harm. Um, so the ordinance itself is not black and white to, for us to understand how we're going to follow forward. The other issue is we do have other stores, the family does, that are in the LA unincorporated area. They did enforce such thing. Uh, they give us six months to comply. However, this one has only 30 days. That's uh, a proposal, so, but, okay. yeah, go ahead. Uh, furthermore, the only thing that we're doing at the moment is we're taking the brick and mortar places who we can regulate, and we're shutting them down, allowing the door to open up for the uh, online sales. So now any kid with a prepaid credit card could get the same stuff you're banning in the city with disregard to everything we're doing right here. So you could drive the truck through the proposal that is at hand. Uh, I urge you to reconsider before approving the uh, proposal, and thank you very much. Thank you, sir. City Clerk? Mr. Mr. Or Ms. Manila? Was that? Oh, here we go. Hi. And your name, so... Rosie Mainella. Hi. And um, I'm a community resident here in Palmdale. I've lived here for hmm, 27 years. And the reason I'm up here talking to you about this ban is because with all the children that I've noticed um, at the different schools that are getting hooked on all these flavors, um, it's, it's really sad and really uh, detrimental that they are being hooked to these flavors. And um, at different schools that we've gone to, to talk about um, tobacco and um, vaping products. The nurses have told us about how kids are acting very aggressive and they don't understand why. And it's because they're going through withdrawals when they're not vaping. So um, it's really hard here in the city of Palmdale specifically and in the Antelope Valley itself to, um, to make sure that our children are not using stuff that they're not supposed to. Because as we all know, we're commuters, right? So we're not necessarily here to keep an eye on our kids. We can do the best that we can, but uh, putting uh, rules and regulations into place where it takes our village to handle that, I think it's a good idea. So as far as uh, figuring out all the 
uh, navigation of that. I'll leave that up to you and your knowledge. But thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Is it quick? <clears throat> okay. Anybody else who wanted to speak that had not filled out a card? The hey, name so we uh, Javier Flores. Uh, uh, I apologize for not filling out the card. I just forgot about this one. Now. I'm completely we just focused on the other. Um, but essentially, <clears throat> uh, there's a couple of comments that I want to make in regards to mint and menthol and excluding those flavors from the ban. I would urge you to reconsider. Uh, those flavors are being used by uh, e youngsters, underage youth, uh, just like they're using all the other flavored um, uh, tobacco products and vaping products. The w part that concerns me the most and the thing that really gets me is the sinister way that the um, industry is fabricating all these um, uh, vaping devices in order to uh, deceive parents and adults and administrators and teachers and, and you name it. Um, I'm sure you've you've uh, gotten a good idea of all that's involved your cities dealing with this issue as well through their tobacco uh, projects so I don't need to go into it but um, I, I would urge you to reconsider. Um, you, I know that your intent is good you want to protect the smoker who wants to quit but there is no proof, none whatsoever, that vaping products actually help with a cessation of tobacco or help them quit. There isn't that yet. And I'm not sure there'll ever be because you're talking about products that have little packages of nicotine that is the equivalent of a whole pack of cigarettes. So I'm not sure how you quit when you use you know, that amount of nicotine. It seems like the whole objective is to get you hooked on nicotine no matter what. Um, <clears throat> uh, lastly, um, you've exhibited a lot of courage in the past, Mayor. Uh, you actually were the person who um, um, were at, was at the forefront of getting a ban on spice. Uh, you brought the individual down from another city and had them present to the Planning Commission and the Council, and then you implemented a ban and, and got rid of it in this city. <clears throat> um, we think you're on the right track. You're sharing, uh, showing courage again. All that we ask is that you, because um, what happens is oftentimes cities influence state and federal legislation. Oftentimes the opposite is true as well. Federal legislation, state legislation then influence the city. In this case, it's going to be up to us. It's going to be up to the municipalities. Take this, get it implemented, get it adopted, implement it as soon as possible. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Do you have anybody else there, uh, Madam City Clerk? Okay. Anybody else that uh, failed to fill out a sheet that needed to speak on this item or I'll take a motion to uh, close public hearing? So moved. Second. Right. Motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Um, all right. So the... The basic, um, uh, the basic premise of this is uh, so we want to avoid the, um, uh, all these, uh, the various fruit flavors and stuff, uh, start getting that stuff off the streets. Um, I, I've heard from uh, the, re the retailers here, we want to try to be sensitive to, to these guys to be able to, uh, uh, an ordinance normally goes into effect in 30 days, correct, sir? That's correct. Uh, but we have the option that we could allow them a, a transitional period, uh, whether it's as long as six months or as short as 60 days. We have, we have the ability to, uh, to uh, by ordinance, decide what that time period would be. Sure. You could, you could adopt the ordinance and delay its implementation for, for whatever period the, the council decides upon. Because I, I know that sometimes you've got inventory issues, you've got, uh, you've got stock on hand, and uh, you may have some purchase commitments, may have business things. You may, have, may need to be able to start looking at how to uh, make adjustments in, in what your inventory is uh, at your shop. So uh, I think that, that, that they may have made, a, made some valid comments on that. So that's what I'm hearing on that. Uh, I can tell you that uh, I'm looking at being on three different legislative committees right now. The state's going to be coming down with some head on. Uh, and I think that, uh, you know, how, how that's going to, how that, how and what form that's going to take, um, 
uh, personally, I'd rather have a moratorium on any more uh, liquor, I mean, excuse me, uh, tobacco and vaping shop licenses so we don't get somebody coming in and opening the shop and then mm -hmm. having this problem come down when the state comes down. Uh, that's a separate topic um, that we can entertain, but Council, what, what are your thoughts on this particular item? I don't know whether you want to. So I'm going to step up for it. I'm going to start one. I, I would think that we would ex ex extend the um, implement implementation for 90 days instead of 30. I think okay. that's fair. Mr. Bishop? Um, I think it's important to note that this is basically we're dovetailing into what the county of Los Angeles has set into motion here. Um, we're merely just following them. And I am sensitive to this as a business owner because I, I do realize the effect it can have on, on local companies that have invested and have been here many years. So I do sympathize with that. And also it is, you know, it is uh, a product that it can help you stop smoking. I'm sure there's individuals out there that used to smoke cigarettes and now they vape. So it's, you know, I'm aware of that. I'm sensitive to it, but we also have to acknowledge the fact that that maybe these products are being marketed to kids like a bubble gum and cotton candy and stuff like that yeah, so uh, you know yeah, yeah it's tough but but the county has already made this decision ours isn't quite as strict as a county correct no uh, it's Mr. not city attorney yeah I've, I've read a lot of different ones so i believe that the county uh bans all flavors including okay all right. so we, 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 we've got a little bit of uh leeway in that right okay can we can we do six months like the county did that way. These well, guys I, I've heard 90 days. I've heard six months. Let's let's see. Mr. Law, what do you think? Six months. I was going to suggest the six months just because the existing retailers have leases and they have, have commitments. Maybe giving them six months uh, for them to phase out that product would help them in their leases or adjust them or do whatever they need to do so that they can um, get rid of the product that they currently have. Right. Uh, I think that six months um, gives them more adequate time to adjust their leases or think about um, what they can do to comply with the, the sale right. ordinance. Um, um, it, so uh, let me ask you a question. Uh, can we just got one of the largest enforcement grants um, and uh, exceeding many larger cities uh, because we, we, we have We've demonstrated we can be effective. We've got a good community-based um, um, network out there that's assisting us with uh, some of these these education enforcement issues. Can that be used on? Uh, can that be used towards uh, the uh, vaping ordinance and education uh, work? There, you're looking around. <laughs> yeah, I was going to defer to Sarah, but I don't. I don't know if I see her out there. State your name so the city clerk's got it on there. Andrea Via, Community Compliance Specialist for the City of Palmdale. And the answer is yes. Uh, there's no stipulations with our grant money. It could be used for anything with, uh, within the purview of anti-tobacco. Mm -hmm. So anti-vaping, anti-tobacco. Anti um, their main goal with the Department of Justice is the deterrence of youth. So anything that deters youth, which vaping is the big topic with youth, is most... Definitely Good. something that we can use. Thank you for that clarification. So I'd like to ask that, mm -hmm. that um, in conjunction with this, that we try to make a, a focused effort to, to work with the retailers uh, and, and their efforts and work with the enforcement. So enforcement and education is part of this. But, uh, well, um, Council, I, I've heard, I, I think I've got at least three people, and I, I'm okay with 90 days, I'm okay with, with six months, but I think that the... Um, I think they made a very valid point that they've got lease issues, they've got business issues, they've got inventory issues, they've probably got supply line issues they need to deal with. I'm okay with that. So if somebody wants to make a, a motion on this. I have a, another point. I, I don't understand really. I understand the um, theory behind excluding tobacco, mint, and menthol flavors from this ordinance. However, um, I don't think that there has been any any real proof, at least the, during the briefings and the commentary, that there is a connection between that and the transition from uh, just a second transitioning from you know a tobacco addiction to not having one. I, I don't see the connection. In fact, 
uh, just on a personal level, I've seen the opposite, and it get worse. There's no question that this is a real major hazard for our youth, all of these. And I understand the retailer's position, and that's why I'm in favor of giving them time to transition this in, but I don't see a real reason to exclude tobacco, mint, and menthol. So I'd like to have that added in. I would agree with uh, uh, Council Member Loa. Uh, one of the reasons why this is being proposed in many uh, cities and counties is because of the protection that it can provide to the youth who can easily get access to those products. If we ban the flavored uh, menthols or uh, liquids, then they would still have a choice uh, of having the non-flavored uh, products. Um, I, I would propose that we amend it, removing everything uh, that is what you said, and give them 90 days to uh, get rid of the... But their, 90 days or six uh, months? Six, six months, I'm sorry, six months. Yeah. All right. Um, any other comment on that item? Or am I assuming so, that's a motion? That's a motion. So I second it. Okay. We're, we're adding Discussion? in... I'm, I'm, I'm saying that all the uh, flavors, tobacco, mint, and menthol, should be added into this ordinance. So removing the exemption, the line that says, except for those flavors, um, it starts with except for those flavors? Yes. Tobacco, yes. And then ends and with menthol. tobacco products. Right. Just end that line with electronic cigarette products, period. Correct? Correct. Is that right. what you're saying, sir? Yes, sir. So that's, so that's a motion. And, and Mr. Carrillo makes that a second. Was that clear, city attorney, with, with the... Uh, so we're looking at, at ordinance number page two of three, the last paragraph, line three, period after the word products. Um, and then, and then uh, just yeah, bring that into whatever the ordinance I, language. I think the, the change would occur in um, section A of uh, section, or subsection A of section 5.04.670, which is on page two of six of the, of the ordinance. Um, four is the definition of flavored electronic cigarette products. Uh, we could strike the language that says, with the exception of tobacco, mint, menthol, spearmint, or wintergreen. If that's, if that's the desire of the council. I, I just have a question because I don't smoke. You take away all the flavors and they're vaping. What are they tasting? I'm just curious. I mean, I have it. Nicotine. Because he said take away the tobacco flavor too, right? I mean, is it just, I have no idea. I'm just curious. So we take away all the flavors, and then it just tastes like, what? I'm just curious. I don't know. I, I'm as ignorant as you are on, on what that <laughs> would be. Anybody here that uses So you leave in the tobacco? This is? No, I asked. I, I wanted to know. Okay. I, was, I was curious as to. Uh, do you want to call him back up? Yeah, could you come back up and explain that? I'm just curious. And I just and she'll curious. ask you a specific question. So this is just your opportunity to answer that question, okay? All right. Okay, so the question is, if you take out all the flavors, right. when a person vapes, what are they tasting? Really disgusting tobacco flavored. If you ever smelled a cigarette, that's essentially what you would be smoking. I don't know anybody who would smoke that and be like, you know what, I'm just going to get another pack. I'm just going to go back to cigarettes. That's the whole point of vape juice. You understand? Okay. All right. Great. Cool. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you, sir. Well, let's hear from Mr. Flores and see what his position is on that flavor. Where is he? I think we're putting him. Where is Mr. I think Flores we're putting him uh, on the spot here with being a non-user. But he doesn't smoke, so how? Yeah. He? Well, maybe. You got a staff member here that might be able to address that? Okay. Repeat the question. The question is: If you remove all the flavors when a person vapes. What are they tasting? It tastes it, like tobacco cigarettes. So it, there is a flavor. Like regular smoking a cigarette. That's, yeah, they're, 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 you can smoke. You can still vape without the flavor. Okay. That's the question. Okay. So yeah, there is flavorless um, vaping. And I know sure you can yeah. okay. confirm that. Yeah. But it's far less appealing. <laughs> not all tobacco, not all vaping is flavor. Okay. It's just, yeah, and that's the component that we guys are voting like, on is the... Flavor. It sounds to me like it's like a vaporizer. It's all it is. It's, it's just like an add. It's an add-on. It's an add-on, and okay. there's this particular term. Okay. So you really, and I can't recall the term. There's a term that causes the flavoring. Okay. That's what you're ultimately um, removing. Okay. So, um, city, city attorney, what's? Thank you. Thank you. What 
I mean, is there is there any is there an easier way to, to phrase this, or just take that out and then uh, work on the mechanics of this? My motion is to take out all of those flavors. Yeah. And with the exception second. Second. Yeah, second. And that's the same ordinance. That would reflect or so is, uh, is expect, that may I flavoring? complete this? May I complete this thought, please? Thank you. Okay. It sounds like um, it's a flavoring since you can have flavorless and tobacco flavored. Yeah, but I, I think he's saying taking that out. Just go, go, if they've got the flavorless stuff, or they're using it as a, as a medical crutch, so to speak, they have the ability to still do that. Um, but you take the flavored stuff out of it, you know. Right. And that would that would mirror the Los Angeles County ordinance, as far as you know. So, so I could I could delete the words mint, menthol, spearmint, or wintergreen from the definition of flavored electronic cigarette products, and so that would that would leave in flavorless and tobacco flavored. Did you want to leave tobacco in that, or do you want? My to... my motion was to remove all of the flavors. Okay, so I ordinance. think they're just going to have to. We're going to have to figure out the mechanics behind that. So, uh, whatever that leaves us with, that that's what it leaves us with. So. I, I think we're getting a little aggressive on this ordinance. I think our main focus was making sure that we're creating a, a prior, you know, it's about a product that's becoming appealing to kids. And uh, well, I think Mr. And, 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 we, and we don't want to be naive and think that an adult, they can just order it off offline. You can go to Amazon.com and order it. So it's going to hurt the retailers when people stop buying from them and start ordering it online. So maybe we should leave something for adults who want to vape. That's, that's what I'm saying is there's still adult smokers out there that like the menthol products. You know, I just, and you know, I, I, I don't want to go too far off the beaten path. You know, this, this thing is supposed to be intended to, uh, to keep away from our youth. And, um, you know, the flavored stuff, I think, definitely is more along those lines. But the menthols and the mints, I think that's more for... For smokers that are, are trying to get away from it, or, or my fear is, is that everyone's just you know going to go back to smoking traditional cigarettes again, which you know is a lot stinkier. And you're yeah. either stuck in your car or stuck in your house because it's about the only place you can smoke anymore. Oh. No, but they, they do have other choices. If you want to stop quit smoking, you don't have to go to vaping. There's that patch and gum and all kinds of things. Um, I would think for me the intent is to protect or youth from doing that for our kids. Yeah. I think it goes um, beyond, I think it goes a little beyond that, health, but that's health, the biggest issue. Health uh, it concerns too. Yeah. Uh, the idea of uh, kids being able to order it on Amazon, I mean, that, that really falls on the parents. You know, I gave my son a, a, an ATM card, and I do monitor where he spends his money. Uh, it gives me the, the, the choice to see where he's spending his money, and if I see that he's buying products on Amazon, I'm going to question where, what products those are. Uh, so that really brings the responsibility on, on us, the parents. That was my thought as well, Mr. Carrillo, that uh, the parents do have to monitor this. I think we got to, I think with the, the motion as it stands right now, allows the six month period, if there's something that Probably. we're messing up or there's another, uh, if there's something that needs to be modified, it can always come back within that period of time. But in the meantime, yeah. I, I, I tend to agree we need to take some action. Yeah. I'm, I'm sympathetic to the retailers that came into this. Yeah. Um, uh, um, with a legal product that was legal at the time, but uh, again, times change, and we're getting more evidence, um, and and it's quite frankly, it's a, it's a problem out there. I I walk the kids to school, and I get kids at middle school that are smoking with these disguised things. So, um, so we got a motion. It's a motion. We got, and then we got a second. So what is the motion? The motion is to remove the, the flavors, tobacco, mint, and menthol. Okay. There was discussion of eliminating. Yeah, so he and Mr. 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 Lowe reiterated that yes, he wants to eliminate that that whole line, tobacco, mint, and menthol uh, line there, and um, on um, item number four. Item please. number four. Take take out the exception. Right. And continue it. And and delay and, and, and delay implementation six for six months from this date. Right. Correct? To reiterate the uh, motion? Yes, correct. Okay. All right. Anything further on this item or call for a question? Okay. Has Richard already made a motion? Um, also made a second? No. Uh, I think Mr. Carrillo second. second. Was that, uh, City Attorney, was that clear with the. So the motion should also include uh, any other. Place where that may be impacted within the resolution or the ordinance. We could also right. we, we could delete the 
the corresponding whereas provisions in the okay. ordinance. Okay. All right. So yes. I hear the motion second. The amendment. As amendment, correct. Okay, we have a 4-1, Mr. Bishop, voting down. Okay, um, that was item number 21-4, correct? And we have item number 21-5. And who's, who's going to be handling that one for us? Uh, that'll be me also. Okay, Mr. Durant. One minute just to... Putting my notes on the previous ordinance. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and members of the thank city you, council. Thank you, sir. Um, before you this evening is ordinance number U fifteen thirty six which is an urgency ordinance of the City Council of the City of Palmdale, California, amending Title 17 of the Palmdale Municipal Code to comply with state law regulations applicable to accessory dwelling units and junior accessory dwelling units. And if it would please the Council to... Okay, introduce the ordinance number U1536. I need a motion on that, please. Quote. Okay, second. Motion a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So, so, uh, so the motion carries. All right, so basically the bottom line on this is the state keeps changing the uh, the playing field on this, and this language is, is cleanup language and all-encompassing that says our ordinances are in effect unless there's a state ordinance, and that takes precedence. Is that yeah. basically it? Correct. I mean, wh what we're trying to do is retain as much of our existing ordinances we can while we work on a comprehensive update to the ordinance regarding accessory dwelling units. Um, and like you said, essentially what this would do is say if, if the parts of our current ordinance that comply with the new state law will be in effect and anything that is contrary to state law, then the state law would apply. Okay. And then we're currently working on a comprehensive update They'll have to go to the planning commission and then come back to the city council. Okay, good. Anybody, uh, do we have any speaker cards in this one? No, we didn't. No, did anybody want to speak on the accessory dwelling units ordinance? Okay, um, motion to close public hearing, please. Motion. Second. Motion second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So ordered. Um, okay, so the staff recommendation is to adopt ordinance number U1536. Is there any comments, questions, or a motion? I'll make a motion to adopt uh, Second. U1536. Okay. I have a motion by Mr. Carrillo, second by Ms. Betancourt. So the motion is second. 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 We need to take a break. We'll be back in a couple of minutes, okay? Just so just give us a break. A minute to make a
Good, you found them. I did. I'm okay. All right. What? Okay. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get started. So, so we are at item number twenty-one point six, public hearing and review of appeal nineteen zero zero three, conditional use permit nineteen dash zero one one, resolution number CC two thousand nineteen dash one one one, or resolution two CC. CC 2019-112 for adoption, staff reference, uh, economic development, and planning. Good evening. I'm Rob Bruce, the planning manager from the city of Palmdale, and I have the honor to re read not one but two titles for resolutions. The first one is resolution number CC 2019-111, a resolution of the city council of the city of Palmdale, California, upholding the planning commission approval of conditional use permit 19-011, and denying the appeal filed by Pueblo y Salud Incorporated and the Prevention Community Council allowing the request to establish a Type 20 off-sale beer and wine alcoholic beverage control license for a grocery store use with sales of tobacco within an existing tenant space located at 3020 East Palmdale Boulevard or resolution number CC 2019-112, resolution of the City Council of the City of Palmdale, California overturning the Planning Commission approval of conditional use permit 19-011 and approving the appeal filed by Pueblo y Salud Incorporated and the Prevention Community Council denying the request to establish a type 20 off-sale beer and wine alcoholic beverage control license for a grocery store use with sales of tobacco within an existing tenant space located at 3020 East Palmdale Boulevard. CP 19011 is a request to allow the sale of beer and wine and tobacco from a proposed neighborhood grocery store. The proposed store will be 4,500 square feet in area with 111 square feet devoted to the sale and display of alcohol. The request was approved by the Planning Commission on November 14th on a 3 to 1 vote. The appellant is requesting that the approval be reversed due to concerns regarding high crime, over-intensification, location, and, big, and ambiguities of the existing ordinance. State law defines high crime areas as exceeding 120% of the average crime rate in the city. By this standard, the area experiences a 438% of the average crime rate and is a high crime area. However, as a significant portion of Palmdale is undeveloped, this, formally, this formula heavily weights the crime rate in the developed portions of the city. To give the Planning Commission perspective, the underdeveloped portions of the city were factored out, leaving a crime rate of 112%, just under the high crime rate threshold. This is a, photo, this is a map of the crime reporting district, and the dots represent uh, reported crimes. The Palm Municipal Code has two methods for calculating overintensification. Using the population density method, the site is overconcentrated. However, using the retail density method, the area is well under the threshold of overintensification. This map shows um, the locations utilized for the, uh, the retail density method. The only location standard for this use is 1,000 feet away from any sexually oriented business. As no such business exists within this distance, this request is consistent with the location requirements of the Palmdale Municipal Code. With that, the, the City Council has three options to adopt a resolution upholding the Planning Commission decision, adopt a resolution overturning the Planning Commission decision, or to continue the item and direct staff to return with additional information. That concludes staff's presentation, and I'm here for any questions. Okay, um, we have a number of speakers on this. What are we what are we looking at there? Ballpark number. Twenty. Twenty. Okay, that's an hour of testimony. So, do we have a, a primary representative for the appellant, so we can give them a couple extra minutes here? So, would that be um, Mr. Flores? Okay. So, what I'd like to try to do here is have have a primary um, 
uh, primary party for, for the appellant come up and provide that. And then we'll have the prime, do we have a primary supporter for the, uh, for the uh, applicant for the store? Is there somebody here for the store? Okay, and then you can come up and we'll give you a few minutes. And then what we'll do is we'll limit the testimony and the balance of the items. We'll go to two minutes. Otherwise, we're going to be here till midnight or two o'clock in the morning, okay? So here's the deal. You can tell somebody the history of the world in, in a couple of minutes, okay? If somebody's already said it, uh, concur with their statements. Uh, and um, and let's, uh, let's get the next guy up here, you know? So we can, um, but we want to make sure that we hear what everybody's got to say. So being that um, Pubbly Salud made the uh, application uh, for the uh, appeal, uh, can you come up, sir, and um, we'll listen to what you have to say here. And just because you turned in a slip doesn't mean you have to talk, it, you know. So keep that in mind, too. Javier Flores representing um, the Palmdale Prevention Community Council and Pueblo y Salud. <clears throat> um, Mayor, um, good evening, Mayor and Honorable Council. Um, I prepared a three-page document. Uh, I'm sure I'm not going to be able to read that in three minutes, but it has everything that we think is pertinent to this case. Uh, we tried to be as meticulous as possible. We were charged $1,800 in order Contain, for us... I, I, want, I want to hear what you have to say because you paid for this You paid for this to be here. Thank you. So, <clears throat> Pueblo y Salud, a staff and members of the Prevention Community Council met with three siblings representing J&G, Gonzalez Number 2 Enterprise, the CUP number 19-011 uh, applicant on August 6, 2019 at the behest. The meeting was introductory in nature during which we explained our work and purpose and shared with them our concerns buttressed uh, by data and research. They mentioned their family business history and their goal for the proposed use. We asked if they would uh, operate the proposed establishment even if they did not obtain the CUP. As is mentioned and reinforced in the staff report, they stated they would. <clears throat> they mentioned that only 8 to 10 percent of gross sales and their other business establishments were dedicated to alcohol and tobacco sales. When asked if this reduction in gross sales would prohibit them from making a livelihood or keeping from doing business, they answered it would not. When asked if they would offer a unique alcohol product not found in the surrounding area, they answered no, they would not. The alcohol products they sell can be easily found in many places throughout zip code 93550, including six off-sale establishments located in Census Tract 9106.02. When asked if they'd be willing to rescind their CUP application given the high crime and low health rates of the area, they stated they would have to confer with their family members and get back to us. However, we never heard from them after that. Well, Pueblo Salud and the Palmdale Prevention Community Council believe that the proposed use is not consistent with the goals, policies, and objectives of the general plan because as specified within general plan objective uh, section 2.5, projects should minimize potential hazards related to crime through the development uh, review process. The project site is located in a high crime area with a crime rate that is 438% of the city-wide average. A high crime rate is defined by Palmdale Municipal Code Section 17.92.070.8 as a crime reporting district that has more than 120% of the average crimes reported. There are 33 crimes reported, reporting districts within the city of Palmdale's boundary. The project is within Crime Reporting District 2608, which had a total of 1,064 offenses during the year 2018. The average number of offenses for reporting periods for all 33 districts was 242, and 20% greater than the average would be 292. Because of the high crime rate in the subject reporting district, the City Council should find that the proposed use would not be beneficial or desirous to the community. 
But Lisa Luth and the Palmdale Prevention Community Council believe the proposed use is not beneficial, desirous, or consistent with the purpose, intent, and standards of PMC Section 17.92.070 because the project site is located in a high crime area with a crime rate that is 438% of the citywide average. I would go ahead and continue, but this is a pretty much a redaction of what I just read earlier. So I'm going to skip that in order to expedite this process just a little bit. I would like to just read the last comment. Uh, as a result of all this crime, uh, uh, there, and the preponderance of research and data informs us that the concentrations of alcoholics in a given community will likely adverse, adversely affect the residents of said community. And then we ask you to please see attachments B, C, and D in your report. Um, we, again, um, believe that this uh, uh, proposed use will not be beneficial or desirous to the community. The Palmdale Prevention Community Council and Pueblo Salud are opposing are opposed to the granting of CUP number 1-00011 because the proposed use is not beneficial, desirous, or consistent with the proposed intent and standards of the PMC, which deals with overintensification because the project is located in an area that is unduly saturated with off-sale outlets. According to over-intensification definition found in PMC section 17.92.070B under population density method, over-intensification of off-sale beverage establishment shall occur when the ratio of the resident population to the permitted off-sale alcohol beverage establishment as defined by the Department of Alcohol Beverage Control within the census tract or census division exceeds the ratio of the population to off-sale alcohol beverage establishments for the city. According to a report provided by the California Department of Alcohol Beverage Control, ABC, please see attachment A, census tract 9106.02 should allow two off-sale outlets, but presently has six off-sale outlets. According to the city staff report, using the commonly used population density method for determining over-intensification, this report also states that census tract 9106.02 should allow for 1.93 off-sale outlets. So ABC is saying only two, city staff report is saying only two, they too agree that the area should be allowed only two outlets and acknowledge in the report that the area presently has five existing all sale licenses. Both ABC and city staff agree that the area where the applicant business is located is unduly concentrated with all sale alcohol outlets and has a very high crime rate. Pueblo Salud and the Prevention, Palmdale Prevention Community Council would like to remind members of the city council that these were the two key elements addressed by the city council during a past appeal of the Planning Commission decision. Though these elements were key in our arguments, the Planning Commission decided, decided to give them little value. In co <clears throat> contrast, during the appeal to City Council, this body decided to do the opposite and paid a great deal of attention to the issues of outlet density and high crime. Indeed, these two elements form the crux of their decision to deny the applicant request and reverse the decision of the Planning Commission. The Palmdale Prevention Community Council and Public Salute would like to bring to the city's council's attention the two occasions in the staff report where mention of fiscal impact is made. Both instances, it is stated that the approval of the project may result in increased sales tax revenues. There is no mention of the potential cost due to increased law enforcement activity lost days of work due to sickly workforce, no mention of the taxable corporate income reduction due to the health insurance line item in the corporation's end of year cost reports. See, if I'm a business and I have a budget and a lot of my money is going to uh, things like health insurance, that's less money that's taxable that I can pay you taxes on. So you're losing a great deal of tax. The Palmdale Prevention Council 
I would like to bring to the city's attention, I'm sorry, Public Salud and Prevention and the Prevention Community Council believe that the proposed use should not be granted because in the Planning Commission's process to find public convenience, convenience or necessity during their meeting on October 10th, 2019, city staff failed to mention or consider a formula that exists in the current alcohol ordinance and is a requirement of the local standards. The ordinance indicates that if PCN is to be found, a specific demand not currently served must also be found. In essence, necessity defi is defined as, quote, an alcohol beverage establishment where more than 50% of the alcohol beverage products sold or served are not available within one quarter mile of the location. This issue was not addressed by staff in the report to the Planning Commission, and the Planning Commission failed to address it as a consequence. <clears throat> Last Can you summarize? Yeah. Well, we salute them. The Prevention Community Council also believe that the proposed dues should be granted, should not be granted, because the City Council has not received an in-depth analysis of the crime that took place in Census Track 9106.02 in 2018. You have a report of service calls made in 2018 to the Sheriff's Department from the proposed use location, but this is not the same thing. An in-depth analysis of crime in the crime reporting district for the last year available would provide the City Council cr critical data needed to make an informed decision on this matter. Without this information, a decision will be made that does not protect to its full potential the safety and welfare of our residents. In addition, the calls for service in the past 12 months mentioned in the staff report indicate that three calls for service were made. Please note that the establishment received these three calls during a time when business site was not even open for business. Wasn't open for business and they still received three calls for service. Now, what might we expect of the business site when it is open for business? In closing, we would like to state that if it is Pueblo Salud and the Palmdale Prevention Community Council's profound desire to avoid the same scenario from occurring again and again. For this reason, we propose that City Council first deny CUP number 19-011 and immediately af after move to direct staff to return with policy change recommendations that will prevent this scenario from repeating itself in the future. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Uh, staff, can there were several issues that were brought up. Can before we go too far down the line here, can can you uh, provide any clarification to any of the comments? We had, um, uh, uh, as I read further into the, the report here, um, I, had, I understand that there's there's a section that had the, uh, the calls for service stand, uh, stated. It's but service, right? Yeah, and, but then when you look back into the, uh, the specifically addressing the high crime area, it speaks that the majority of the crime issues going on there are larceny, uh, larceny theft, uh, that there, in fact, was a... a um, Statistics for reporting districts two two six zero oh, eight, uh, yeah, for the years twenty fourteen through eighteen. I think there's a we got a whole paragraph on that here. Um, I, I don't know, I don't know what the larceny. I think larceny has more to do with Prop forty seven than anything else. Uh, any other um, feedback that commentary you had on that? I know that you did a um, a weighted analysis which is a little bit more comprehensive than the kind of the thumbnail thing that ABC does right now. And we've been talking to ABC about making some adjustments and uh, so we can get a, a more accurate representation of what's going on in the area. Can you address that for us, please, sir? Uh, in our more urbanized portions of the city, uh, the preponderance of the uh, crimes are you know, larceny, theft, and disturbances. As you get into the more rural areas, it's more about speeding, um, uh, uh, dumping and those kinds of things. So when we look at the city of Palmdale, uh, you'll see that about half of it is underdeveloped or undeveloped. 
And in working with the sheriff's department, it was pointed out to us that as you do a statistical analysis, that isn't an accurate representation for the developed portions of the city. So what we started doing to give the Planning Commission perspective was factor out the underdeveloped portions of the city. And if you look at a map, it very much reflects the developed areas. The area around Plant 42 is factored out. The area out in River Ranch that's undeveloped is factored out. And then you end up with a very different look at our urbanized portions of the city and where are our high crime areas and where are they not. Um, we do have high crime areas on the east side predominantly. Uh, this area is just under the high crime uh, threshold. It's at 112% when you factor out the underdeveloped portions of the city. Uh, that is given for reference. The uh, code as it's currently written for alcohol establishments gives the Planning Commission or the decision making body um, some direction on factors that they may consider in evaluating an alcohol establishment. And those items that may be considered are high crime, over intensification, location, and um, area factors. So none of these are mandates within our code. Uh, it is simply provided as guidance for the decision making body. All right, thank you. All right, uh, the, uh, uh, the project applicant, would you like to come forward here? We'll give you some time. Once we get the bright side and the groom side, then we'll... <laughs> yeah, two for one deal. Yeah. Hello. Good evening. Good evening, Mayor, members of the City Council. Alex Gonzalez is my younger sister, Monica Gonzalez. Hello. Our family has owned the meat market in Lancaster for almost 30 years. During those 30 years, we've been getting a reputation of selling some of the best meats in town and being a one-stop shop. And... Uh, for being a, a small business, it's uh, very important to us to cater to our customers. And even though our alcohol sales are between 8 to 10 percent, not having these items in our in this location will not only hurt our business but inconvenient our customers that need us or count on us. In Lancaster, we've had our alcohol tobacco license since 1990, so we know it's a huge responsibility that we take serious. So we'll make sure we follow all the regulations. At the end of the day, we're not a smoke shop, we're not a liquor store, we're just a small business that wants to bring something positive to the city of Palmdale. We honestly do have the best customers. Um, without them, we wouldn't be here today with the opportunity to open up a second location after, like you said, 30 years. Um, our goal is to provide everything we possibly can for our customers. That includes the best meat in town, groceries, produce, and yes, beer and wine. Ultimately, like he said, a one-stop shop. Everything we provide for our customers in Lancaster, we want to also provide to our loyal customers in Palmdale. Um, coming from a large family myself, I know family and safety is a priority. And it's very important. We take everything seriously when training our employees to do everything by the books and regulations in order to sell alcohol. I know um, you mentioned earlier saying that the... Uh, the high crime actually dropped in Palmdale, so that's great. I know opening up another business would actually bring new growth and positive growth to the Palmdale community and also help out local businesses like ourselves. So thank you. Okay. All right, City Clerk, uh, in any particular uh, order here, uh, can we call up uh, some speakers? We actually have a uh, two people from Okay. Um, that's Nancy Speaks and Naomi Mitchell. Okay. All right, so now we're going to start running the clock now because we've had the applicant and the, uh, uh, the, the appellant and the, the, and, the, uh, and the particular place now. So uh, uh, we're going uh, to run a two-minute clock on the balance of this for this evening now, okay? Okay, don't start the clock. Thank you for supporting the NAACP uh -huh. a couple of months ago, so just wanted to say that. Um, um, as a member, we definitely support efforts to keep our community safe, um, healthy. That's one of our main objectives in terms of our mission. Um, I'm also a 30-year resident, a retired deputy probation supervisor who used to be a surrogate parent in that back in the day, 
we had the Red Book, we had truant officers, we had issues in our community was much smaller. Um, parents were driving down below, so a lot of times we had to supervise the kids. Uh, this young lady said earlier, parents are not able to really uh, supervise those kids and opportunities where there's more liquor, tobacco, sales, that alarms me because if you have a business and your priority is meat and you're doing well, that's good. But as I look at that map and the intensity of those locations of liquor and beer all in that one area, that's very alarming. And even more alarming as a deputy, the crime. So as I'm heard in this room, most of the people who have spoken say they're advocates for kids. That's my, that's my thing. As a probation officer for 28 years, primarily the time I was, I was working with kids. American Youth Foundation, Pride House, Park and Recreation. A lot of kids are self-medicating, whether it's with liquor, drugs, whatever. These items are destroying families. Within that intense location, there are a lot of hurting families. And if I can be even more specific, a lot of black and brown families. And my concern is, yes, we can agree, we can agree, and maybe it's helping the economy, maybe, but let's think about the kids. Let's focus on the kids. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Hernandez, Aurora Hernandez. And who's after that? Um, San Ramon. San will be after that. Yeah. Good evening. Um, you said not to be redundant, so I'm going to try my best to summarize what I have to say. So um, I am, I come to you as from the Palmdale Prevention Community Council and also from Pueblo Salud. Um, my main job there is to um, inform their decisions with data and research. Um, and as Mr. Flores mentioned, um, we're concerned with the way that the uh, investigation is conducted when an applicant applies for a CUP. Um, mostly because of what he said, you know, it, it doesn't take into consideration the community. But my main concern um, also right now is I, I, ha I have an issue with a statement that was made by the applicant just a few minutes ago. They said that um, they are very concerned with doing things by the book. That's one of their priorities. Um, and it's surprising to me that they would say that because um, when they had the meat market on Palmdale near 5th Street, um, at that time it was J&G Gonzalez Enterprise Inc. without the number two in it. Uh, they were actually, their license was suspended for supplying alcohol to a minor. Um, now that they are under a different name, um, they're coming to us saying that they're concerned with the community and that um, safety is their priority. Um, I would like for you guys to take that into consideration because I think that the community deserves an, an honest business and not somebody who's deceiving and um, somebody who really cares about the safety of our community and understands our community, not just does their business there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Roman? I think that should be cleared up. Uh, yeah, well, I'll call him back up. Oh, all right, you know what? Hang on a second, Sam. Uh, I, I need you to address that. Can you come up here? is totally false. There's only one J&G &G Gonzalez, and that's in Lancaster. Was there ever one in Palmdale? Never. So, so that was a different, different, different Gonzalez. Different Gonzalez. Gonzalez. All bad. And, and do you live in Palmdale or Lancaster? I live in Lancaster. My parents live in Palmdale. So, you, so what you're telling me is there might be another person named Gonzalez in Palmdale? No, no, listen. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's plenty. There's plenty. But not J&G Gonzalez Enterprise. Right. That's a fact. Okay. So, okay. That, All was, right. a, that was a totally different there, No, that's not. That's, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Roman. 
when I get a microphone, I get a little bit nervous. Uh, good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor, Council Members. Uh, my name is Sam Roman. I live here in, uh, in Antelo Valley since 1992. On March of uh, 1997, I hear the first uh, radio uh, station in Spanish. A couple months later, I hear that we have a uh, Carniceria Gonzalez. So for the last 26 years, I've been there, you know, their customer. I know them since they were one year old. I know his father, hard worker family, you know. I'm aware of what happened in, in Area 93550, but it's more than alcohol issues, you know. It's business owners for the last 23 years, you know. If I lose 8% of sales, it's a big loss, but not only the 8%. People's not gonna go if they don't if they don't they don't um, have complete uh, service. So twenty percent, why go to a business? You know why to go to a business? They're gonna bring when I hear they're gonna move here. I was very happy. I know the area. They're gonna bring uh, business. They're gonna give work for other people, and I think I'm gonna see more activities right there. So yeah, thank you for everything. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. We got. Rosie Vianella, and then who's following that? Wayne Sorry? Wayne. Wayne Adams to follow that. So Wayne, you might want to come and grab the on-deck box here. So, go ahead. Um, <clears throat> so I'm representing the Pablo Community Council as well. Um, we really said we've met with staff um, at the PCC where they... Um, I'm sorry. We have a with staff and the PCC um, of the, are of the opinion that the political will was lacking um, on behalf of the city council and the city staff and the planning commission, um, <clears throat> which is following suit when we had a meeting um, several weeks ago with city staff and we asked the question that what was needed to change the norms of the application process so that more, no more off-sale alcohol and tobacco outlets were allowed in zip code 93550. Um, we expressed our perception that city staff were um, culprits and that they did not believe our um, contentions that alcohol and tobacco outlet density are adversely impacting the health and safety of the residents in the area and they're undermining our efforts. We are here because we want to change the norms and we want to provide health equity for our community. Um, city staff assured us that um, if we, uh, I'm sorry, that there's a problem, that, that the problem lies within the alcohol and tobacco ordinances themselves and the way that the ordinances are written, which allow and in fact dictate how staff are, um, are to process the application for a CUP. So immediately the conversation focused on possible changes that were required in the ordinances and city staff concluded that they would work on some possible changes but also emphasize the fact that without the political will of the city council, this effort would be for naught. So we are here today to ask um, for two actions. The first is to undo the decision of the planning commission and the second one is to fashion exact language that is needed so that no more off-sale alcohol and tobacco outlets come into zip code 93550. These two actions will clearly demonstrate the staff, um, to staff, the political will exist and that the health and safety of Palmville residents matter to you, not just on the west side. Okay, all right. I don't know, I didn't know this was anything to do with the west side. Uh, who's our, Wayne is next? That's a that's a business decision, Wayne. Good evening, yeah. Mayor, and members of the uh, Council, City Council. I am a resident of uh, Lancaster, California. I work in the area that's uh, you know the subject this evening. Um, I think opening. An establishment like this is a very bad idea. It's going against everything positive that's going on in that area. For instance, you have a beautiful uh, new school there. It's the uh, Aerospace Academy. <coughs> Excuse me. I work at Manzanita Elementary School. These kids have a bad influence in that area. The gang banging, the drugs, the alcohol. 
this would be adding on to that. I think it's a bad idea. Um, I wish that this will not go forward. Thank you for listening. Thank you, sir. Who we have next? Norma Gregory. Norma Gregory, and then to follow? Stephen Upside. Stephen, Stephen Upside. Norma Gregory, going once, going twice. Okay, Stephen Updike, or Upside. If you could say your name correctly, because we're trying to read no your, your scribbling, it's, quite it's, frankly. Yeah, Stephen Updike. <laughs> yeah. So I'm here today. Uh, greetings. It has to get picked up. Gotcha. Greetings, Mayor and City Council members. I work at Tarzana Treatment Center. I'm a health educator. And uh, we do similar work as Pueblo East Salud on environmental prevention for substance use with our community youth. So we see that your uh, city plan, your general plan, is going to include a social justice component going forward. And we would like to frame this in social justice component. Um, both organizations, as well as many others of our sister uh, organizations, deal in public health, and that is uh, environmentally done by reducing access and availability and trying to shift social norms away from uh, accessibility and, and use and acceptance of use by the youth in our community. And these objectives are based on public health with a foundation on social justice. So we at Tarzana Treatment Center support the appeal uh, filed by TTC and uh, the PPCC as being in the best interest of the city of Palmdale, its uh, residents, and in both public safety and public health um, reasons. We feel the community needs less alcohol and tobacco retailers and not more, and that these are very consistent with uh, social justice and environmental prevention um, philosophy. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Who, who are you here next? Benny Marsh. Benny Marsh, and then to follow that, Eliza Marsh. I'm just seeing shaking heads back there. All right. Uh, good evening, Mayor and, and uh, members of the City Council. Uh, my name is Benjamin. My last name is Mesh. So sorry about the R there. Okay. But, um, I, I would like to support the store going in. Um, I kind of look at it a little bit different in the sense that I feel like uh, when I go to the store to, to purchase some meat, that I'm also there to, to buy the other things that are, that are convenient for me, which would include, you know, having beers. Um, you know, I think it's important that we teach our children how to be responsible, and they learn that from their parents. Unfortunately, there's a lot of problems in our society because they don't have parents or they are missing that family unit, and I don't think we can contribute that just to being alcohol-related. Um, the other thing I would say is that uh, I'm, a, I'm a supporter for small family businesses. I think they bring a lot to the community. I think that they actually communicate with our law enforcement very well. And um, I, being a, a member of this community my whole life, I've seen how areas have become vacant. And I think a lot of crimes happen because they are vacant. And by having businesses come in, we're getting rid of that vacancy so that there are people there. And you can't just go in there and... and cause a problem without somebody noticing. So I think it's actually a good thing. I appreciate your guys' time and I appreciate what you do for our great city. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Coming down? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Kevin Mesh. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. My name is Elisa Mesh. Um, I've lived in the Yellow Valley my entire life and most of my life in Palmdale. Um, I welcome family-operated businesses um, into my community, and I support the Gonzales Family Market and their license. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. See? That's how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who's our next couple of... Uh, Janet Bauer. Janet Bauer. And Jeffrey Bauer. And the other Bauer. <laughs> Good evening to you all. I support the Gonzales family. I know they do the right thing and they do it well. I've uh, been um, 
going to their market, ever since I knew it was there. And I look forward to going to the Palm Dole establishment as well. And um, sometimes I kind of wonder if uh, some people are against something like this because it causes competition to the ones that already exist selling wine and beer. Competition is a healthy thing. It, it helps the members of society. So um, I support their license request, and, uh, and I wish you well in your decision. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. The other Bauer? Is there an Eddie can Bauer? We have, can we have them start backing up behind each other so we don't have the big yeah, delay it, between people coming up to the podium? Uh, good evening. Hey, My uh, name is uh, Jeff Bauer, longtime resident here of the AV. And I think uh, some people here in the audience have lost sight of why we are here. This is not about a dive bar in East Palmdale. This is about a grocery store where families go, they buy groceries, they buy produce, they buy meat, they might buy a bottle of wine, take it home. They don't go out in the parking lot, you know, break open a, a bottle of wine and start, uh, you know, consuming the, you know, their, their product right there on, on site and causing a disturbance. And it's not what's going to happen. And I truly believe that, you know, if this was a large box store, maybe a Trader Joe's coming into East Palmdale, wanting to sell beer, wine, we wouldn't even be here right now. That wouldn't be the case. This is a small family. I've been in business for many, many years. Um, they've done a great job for the city of Lancaster. They'll do the same thing here. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Who we have next? We have Brandon Leish and Brian Walters. Okay, and then Brian, can you queue up behind here? So. Okay, let's get them starting to line up here. Uh, good evening, Mayor. Good evening, Council members. Uh, I've known the Gonzalez family for ten years now, around there. I went to high school with their youngest daughter, and since knowing their family, knowing their values, knowing, you know, how they do everything right. I've gone to their store out in Lancaster, and that is also in a high crime area. But being in that area, you don't feel the safest, but when you go into their store, you feel the safeness, and you feel the family feel. That, you know, everyone here talks about a community. Like it's been said, you know, I've lived here my whole life. And I've always felt the community feel. And it feels like now certain people are trying to choke out a family business when all they're trying to do is the right thing. And like the, the man before me said, if it was a Walmart going there, we probably wouldn't be here tonight. And if they do get denied you know, I know they will still open because that's who they are. But I know with that license to sell, it's going to bring them a lot more growth and business from the Palmdale area, from the Acton area. I know of people who travel all the way from Texas and Arizona to come and get their carne asada. So thank you for your time and everything. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good evening. Um, it really comes down to name again. It's a grocery store. It, name, it, name it, it's a grocery store. It's name. need your name again. Oh, Brian Waters. Thank you. Uh, it's a grocery store. It is a place to go shopping. It is a place to buy the things that you need. It's not about the alcohol. It's you get carded when you buy alcohol. You don't go and have a child go into a store to buy alcohol to buy tobacco. That's not what happens. It is a grocery store that you walk into, you buy what you need to, and then you walk out. It's, it's ridiculous that we're even talking about this, trying to get a liquor license in an area that's already been approved by the Planning Commission. And it, it just gets to be ridiculous. It's redundant. So, please. For clarification, it's beer and wine. So uh, beer and wine, yeah. Okay. Exactly. Right. But it, it just it gets very, very frustrating. To sit back and watch and hear and I, it, they bless her right so yeah, yeah. I, get it yeah. but thank you for your time thank you Mr. Waters we got the next couple of speakers we can queue up so there's only Anthony Mauser Anthony Mauser Anthony <laughs> final speaker there you go good afternoon mayor thank you also for having me here I feel like this has turned into a competition. We're losing focus of what this is really about. <clears throat> Statistics show with alcohol sales, crime rate goes up. 
And I'm sorry, if they open up, I'll be a customer. I'll be a good, I've tried their meat, excellent. What I'm saying is, <clears throat> excuse me, I live, I stay about 25 to 100 feet away from their establishment that's going to open. It's not if they do a beer run, when they do a beer run. What are they going to do, come jump in my patio? I'm sorry, if they want to do a meat market, <clears throat> and they say they run business in 2005, they got cited for selling alcohol to a minor. And I went there a few weeks ago, about three weeks ago, to get me. I felt so uncomfortable. I go, I was scared. When I walked in, I put my chain in my shirt, made sure I had my pepper spray with me, and this is what I see. A gentleman outside with the keys in the ignition, drinking a beer in his car. Another gentleman, not asking me for change, demanding change. He's told me specifically, I'm not asking you, I'm telling you. And at the end of the day, I, my family was a resident of Palmdale for years, like from 88. I want to come back to Palmdale. I don't feel safe enough to bring my family back with me. My family's out in the valley, I stay in Palmdale. And I just feel like we're getting off the subject of, oh, they're, God bless them. I, I wish them nothing but success. But if they're, it's not necessary for alcohol to only 8, 10%, it's not going to hurt them. It's not going to, it's just going to hurt the people around them, yes. People that's been there for 34 years, people that's been there for 20 years. It's just, if they want to open as a meat market, God bless them. And just, the thing is, alcohol sales is unnecessary in that area. It's supposed to be two, there's six. So please take it into consideration. God bless you Thank guys. You. Excuse and thank you. Sir? Can I ask a question? Sir? Yes, sir. Are you saying that their store was suspended, the, the applicants here? Yes, sir, in 2005, was, which where, is a long time ago. Where was that store? That The Lancaster one, the one they're at right now. Okay. okay. And am I wrong? Oh, you guys got cited for minors of alcohol sale. But they got cited for minors of alcohol. And okay. from my beliefs, when you get cited for minor alcohol sales, they usually no, yeah. yeah. Thank you. No okay. problem. Thank you guys for your time. Yes. Can I ask a question? Are we allowed to ask questions now? Yeah, yeah. so, we, so uh, we need a motion to close public hearing. Make so, what? Wait a minute. The bishop wishes to speak. Okay. Come on down. Mr. Mayor and yes. City Council, thank you all so much. I didn't get my name in, but let me just be very, very briefly. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Javier covered basically what I wanted to talk about, and that is 93550. Now, I've lived in the area for 55 years, Lancaster primarily, but I pastored the church right down the street here about eight miles to my church. And so these ladies here are members of the church, and I would say a good third of our membership come out of Palmdale and primarily out of that zip code. So uh, I would, I've come to you to, to, tonight knowing very full well that you guys and lady are up to good stuff. And I want you to know I read our newspaper and keep up with all the things that you're doing. You guys are doing a doggone good job, and I'm proud to be a part of this through the membership of our church. Um, uh, I'd like to say that we've been to you before. Since 2012, we uh, came to you concerning the uh, reduction in tobacco and alcohol, and, and what did it do? It went up 14 points on the off sale, and on site went up 22 points. So I just want to say to you tonight, not having anything against the people who want to set up business here. I don't have anything against them at all. But I do have a very deep concern for the youngsters in our area and our parents to, today are not really keeping up with their kids like they should. So these kids just do what they want to do and they find a way to get the stuff out of the store if it's close by. So I'd like to ask you to consider denying that condition you put. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much.
Okay, you have any other sparky slips? All right. Come on down. State your name, please. Hi, my name is uh, Cassandra Moraz, and I'm a prevention coordinator with Pueblo Excuse Southern. me, what was her okay. name again? Okay, so I just I want to make clear, though, that okay, we gave him 12 minutes, okay? Yeah, and for you. Quite a bit of time, and so we're kind of doubling down here, so uh, from an organizational standpoint, so let's be fair, but go ahead. Okay. What's well, your name again? Okay, so my name is Cassandra Meraz, M-E-R-A-Z. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm a resident of Palmdale. Um, so working as working at the nonprofit Pueblo Salud, I've seen how alcohol and tobacco can affect uh, communities, especially the minority community. And through our work, uh, we've been able to be the voice of the residents uh, through the Northeast San Fernando Valley as well as the Antonio Valley. So with this in mind, um, I'm here today along with others who support the overturning of the Planning Commission's decision of a CUP 19-011. Because granting a COP does not contribute to the well-being and safety of our community, instead it hinders it. Because research has shown that there's a correlation between an increase of alcohol outlets and an increased amount of alcohol problems such as DUIs, alcohol-related crashes, and violence. I'm here to say that I'm not anti-small business, but that the addition of a new business can thrive without selling alcohol and tobacco products. Which is why we are here today to ask that you overturn the City Planning Commission's approval of this license. So I leave you with this. What is more important to you? Supporting the infiltration, infiltration of more alcohol and tobacco in our community or supporting the public health and safety? Thank you. Thank you. I have a motion on the table to close public hearing. Well, we, I think we just we want to just get a couple. Yeah, hang on. What's wrong? We don't want to cut anybody off here. Suzanne Reina, R-E-I-N-A. Thank you so much, council members and mayor, for being here. I was at the opening of the Gonzales Meat Market in Lancaster over 30 years ago. Some of the best carne asada I've ever had. And it was not in the best area. And it is still not in the best area. But you know what? They have never been suspended. They've never been written up. That was an entirely different family here in Palmdale. And it's not fair that because they have the same name that they should have to take the responsibility for it. Also, I think I'm a little upset with everybody blaming our industries and our businesses for the issues that we have with our children and the people's problems on our streets today with addictions to whether it's alcohol, tobacco, or drugs. I think we need to stand up as a whole community and people together and accept our responsibilities for what we've done by not being there as parents. It starts at home. Literally, it doesn't start on the street. It doesn't start in a grocery store. A lot of people came out here this, this evening and said if it was a Walmart or if it was a Target or a Trader Joe's, nobody would have an issue. And they, you're, they, they're probably very true and right. They probably would not have an issue. But my issue is that I'm tired of hearing all night long of a business being blamed for issues that start at home. They don't start in the business. When I go to the grocery store, I want to be able to buy my meat, buy a bottle of wine, or buy my husband some beer if he wants it, buy the fruits and vegetables I need, and leave. I don't want to have to go like I did when I was growing up to six different stores. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Thank you, man. Okay, one last shot. Anybody else? <clears throat> okay, uh, we have a motion on the floor to close public hearing. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Uh, staff, any particular um, responses to any of the comments that, that we got this evening? So, I have a question. Okay. When we knew that they had an existing business, why did we not pull the stats for the existing business? Because, because we were following the Palmdale Municipal Code on preparing... Um, a very detailed staff report. Um, there's, there's quite a lot to an alcohol CUP as mandated by the Palm Dam Municipal Code. Um, with our available resources going above and beyond that is unusual. And in hindsight, if that would be helpful to making a decision, we, we could do that for future applications. But we did not do that for this one. Because what better way to display what kind of activity they have at these kinds of locations They've been in business 30 years. There's, there's data out there to support one way or the other. 
um, maybe we should postpone this until that is done. I disagree with that. It goes back to comparing the retail boxes like Walmart and the other retail stores that were mentioned. We, I believe that we have to follow our municipal code, not somebody else's. I do understand that they have other businesses in other places. They are, these are not the only business people that come to open a business in the city of Palmdale. But if we make this a precedent to see what other businesses and how they operate their other businesses in other places, we will never come up to a solution. Uh, it, uh, I'm not talking about I, similar businesses. I'm talking exact businesses, exact owners, exact take. They said they want to bring it to Palmdale. Well, if I they have so no issues in Lancaster, then they should have no issues I, I in Palmdale. I think in technically... Palmdale. It's it's their parents that operate the one up there, mm -hmm. and they're helping the kids open a store well, here in saying. town. If there's no so problems up there, then why would we expect problems here? But no one pulled the stats. Well, well, I don't know that. Well, we have these anecdotal <clears throat> conversations about things being yeah. cited and that type of thing. We don't have any proof yeah. of that. There's no proof there. Well, it's it's in another community, and quite frankly, and, and don't take this wrong, Bishop. You got a different dynamic going in that neighborhood, I think, than we have here. You just got to take a look at your paper. So I, I want to rely on. There's a report from our sheriff's department and our planning department about what's going on in our city here. So um, let me let me yeah. jump in. First off, I want to thank everyone for coming out tonight. I know it's getting late, but it's an important issue that we all get together like this. And we talk about how we're going to grow the city and move it forward. My biggest takeaway from from the comments was, um, you know, obviously the kids are important. We want to uh, we want to think about our youth while making these decisions. Um, you know, they play a significant role in our future and, and how our city develops and grows over time. But another thing that, that I look at with this is that it's, it's not liquor. It's not flavored liquor pops. It's not, it's not single serves. This, this seems to be more along the lines of beer and, and wine, if I'm correct. And probably not single serve beer or craft beer. It's probably a six pack or something like that. And, and my biggest takeaway is I don't see the youth going into the meat market to grab a six pack of beer or wine. I could be wrong, but I just, I just don't see that. And I don't see, I don't see the cause of, of how it's going to affect our youth and how it's going to make it more accessible for them to get their hands on. I am pro business. You guys know that I'm a businessman. So I, I do encourage business within the city. But I also am very concerned about the youth, and that's why I wanted to bring that up, because if it was uh, flavored liquor, single-serve liquor, liquor pops, all that kind of stuff, I, I think that would be way more of a significant yeah, issue. A, we, have a dip, we have a different conversation then going, so exactly right. right. But yeah. this is just, this is beer and wine, and I just, I don't see the youth saying, hey, let's head to the meat market and grab a, a bottle of, uh, a bottle of cab or a pinot or you know or let's go get you know yeah let's go get you know a but six a pack old, yeah you well know? i think that the differentiation that you're trying to make is that this is a grocery store that has beer and wine as Correct. opposed to a liquor store right so. i think there's a difference there so i just wanted to to paint that picture to my council just what from what i took away and all the comments that you guys brought and i was listening so that's that's just kind of how i see it richard well is there any uh, information in the reports regarding whether the this applicant had a suspended license in 2005? I do not have that information. Okay. I, I know that one person made a misstatement about the uh, this particular applicant uh, owning the store you know, on Palmdale Boulevard that closed some years ago. That was a misstatement. I, and I know personally that it, it is. Um, this is a, what we're talking about as a family business. And I know the issue of alcohol in the community is, is a severe one. But at the same time, when you have an applicant, and I don't know that this applicant um, has ever had a uh, problem. I'm not persuaded by, uh, I don't know what, what evidence was presented about the suspension. I suspect it's in the same category of the speaker who said, that the applicant owned the uh, store on Pompa Boulevard. They do not. And uh, in making a presentation, I think everyone has a responsibility to be careful when they're making these statements because it affects the reputation of a business 
that otherwise has an impeccable record as far as I know. I've never heard anything opposite of that in the community. I think that this Gonzalez family is responsible. I think that they want to make sure that the kind of activities that we're afraid of, concerned with, don't happen. And that's why I asked in the, during the uh, briefing uh, regarding loitering whether a sign is sufficient. Uh, I know that the um, entire um, shopping center uh, has a responsibility to make sure that there isn't any loitering going on. But I'm wondering if there isn't another condition that could be applied. And the other thing is I'm impressed with the number of conditions that, that, were, that were submitted uh, on the approval of this particular applicant. So the considerable number of specific conditions that I think are consistent with making sure that this business is not going to be um, a conduit for youngsters to be buying or somehow acquiring alcohol. Um, but loitering is sometimes an issue. And um, I'm not sure that a sign is enough. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with this, but um, if there was something else that could be added, uh, I don't know what, what the specific um, security requirements are for that particular shopping center. But um, that's something that I think that the applicant should take seriously as well. Did Aside they have a, from, did they have a uh, plan? You know? was there a security plan? Yes, there's a requirement for a security plan. Sheriff, look at it. Um, was it under review? A crime prevention officer will be reviewing that. And so they, so the sheriff's department and the, and the crime prevention officer could, could um, modify uh, what they need to do in order that the, their plan has. They they still have to get approval from the sheriff, right? Correct. Of of their of the plan. Correct. So they're required to provide a plan. So I think sheriff, you're here. You're here in the discussion here, and if there's something we need to look at there, I think that that needs to be heated. So. Right. And if I might, um, the w one good thing about, or one of the attributes of a conditional use permit is if there is a problem in the future, it can go back before the Planning Commission to be addressed. They can either add additional conditions or they can revoke the conditional use permit. Yeah. Well. So here, I got a couple. I made a couple of notes here, and I really appreciate the work that Pueblo Salud is doing in the community. Uh, that, that was uh, that was critical to the previous item as well, and some changes we're looking at uh, in, in, in some of these ordinances. Um, if there's a liquor store, I'd just be calling the question right now. Uh, I've made it real clear, and, and, and I know you and I disagreed about uh, another liquor store item uh, before, but I, I have no vision for liquor stores on Palmdale Boulevard. So if anybody's got a question in their mind about liquor stores, convenience stores, but that's not what this is. We got a grocery store going here, uh, so um, uh, so it's not a liquor store. It's a, it's 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 a market, and there's, there's there's very limited capacity for it. But I think that does impact their ability to um, uh, to draw in the other customer if, if it, it forces them to go someplace else. We know people don't um, don't do that. We can't regulate the name on the door. A small versus big box issue was brought up. Um, so we, we're going to have very quickly, not far from there, uh, a very large, uh, a, lar a well-known um, grocery store that everybody on the east side has been screaming for to come out there. I'm afraid that going the wrong direction on this uh, is going to, and, and, and again, they don't go liquor. It's, I think it's primarily beer and wine. Uh, for that other guy, and I don't know if it's been announced, so I don't want to throw it out there. But um, but the message that I mean, everybody wants to have uh, a quote better, uh, bigger name brand grocery store with higher end products. But if you send the wrong message, because you can't say, well, small guy, we're going to cut you out. But you know what, Mr. Big Joe store, come on down. So that doesn't work. So we got to figure out how do we adjust that. Um, the, uh, you know, Trader Joe's, Whole Foods, Aldi, something like that coming down, uh, uh, to, to that area over there. Everybody's working really hard to attract these things. So I gotta, I gotta kind of be careful about that. Um, I think that the fact that the staff has taken the time to look at the numbers, um, on the retail establishments and the crime rates by indexing them, uh, against, the uh, Population uh, densities and, and on the retail locations. That's something we've been trying to trying to work on since 
before 2003, back when I was on the Planning Commission. And we've been struggling with trying to how to find those numbers. So I appreciate that. I appreciate in the staff report that what we're looking at is uh, primarily larceny issues uh, in that in that zone. And I don't think you can can blame the existing conditions on the applicant. Um, and 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 was crime rate going to go up in there? Well, look, we got Prop 47. They're probably going to get ripped off. Uh, they have that potential in there, so they, they're going to need to find the mechanisms to reduce shoplifting and secure their uh, their groceries uh, as well as their beer. And that's all part of the process that the sheriff is going to go through uh, with the staff. But I think you've got you've got a neighborhood over there that has got vacant buildings. You want to be putting people to work in their neighborhoods. I think that that helps when you start talking about the crime rate and things like that. I think it's a balance. I don't think that looking at what their operation is going to be here uh, versus someone else. We've had other issues on the boulevard over there where, where the, it's, it's looking to primarily become a, a liquor store. I, I, it, I, I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not convinced. You make a very solid argument. I appreciate the, the, the dialogue here. I think we have to, I think we have to be pretty, I think we have to be clear about where we're going to fight our battles and with, with whom and where, uh, uh, and in what cases, um, I, I'm not. I'm not convinced. And I'm, I have been. You know that I'm trying to work on this stuff with you guys. But I'm trying to also find the right balance as well. I think all of us want to find that balance. Um, I'm, I'm not. I'm just not convinced that this one is the one that, that that's going to be a problem. I don't see this as the problem place. Um, and I think also. I just want to remind you that I have a problem with CUPs in general because they tend to be a panacea to the community that we got all these rules, but we've got to be able to enforce them. And I know we've got some additional code enforcement people. I know we have some additional funding for those, uh, for those activities. Uh, I think that's got to be taken very seriously. I don't want to see a situation where three years down the line, we have the Sheriff's Department come in here uh, and say, oh, we've had all these problems the last three years. <clears throat> I mean, we need to be able to deal with it. There's, if they have a problem, first of all, when this happened at another facility over there on the east side, um, we, that's what we got. We got a, this is previous staff, so I'm not shooting at you guys. But we had some previous staff that came in and said, oh, look at all the problems we've had over here for the last couple of years. Why are we just hearing about this now? So let's make sure that we keep an eye on what's going on. And if there's a problem, do the same, um, have the same courtesy to say, okay, we're seeing a trend here. We're thinking that maybe it's related to your place, uh, or is there something else we can do here? And let's take care of it. Um, I know we've done that with some of the other big box restaurants and stores to, to find that. And they've got some additional resources with their risk management departments, but a big place that a small guy doesn't have. Let's make sure we help them and utilize our resources in the community, like community prevention and, and Preble Salute, to help with that process. Uh, and not, we don't want to have a surprise two years down the line, and, and, and then we're all sitting here, you know, with, with egg on our face. So let's let's keep an eye on this as this as this moves forward. And I think the the captain is here and very clear that we we want to make sure that we're putting a quality uh, pl uh, uh, establishment in place there, and that we don't want to have a, a, an eyesore or a community problem over there. Hopefully, we start addressing things like unemployment. That we're hiring some people. Uh, maybe we're helping with some traffic issues because we're not driving as far to go for these things. Um, All right. I don't know. Anybody else? No. Uh, I think we've had enough discussion. I think with that said, I'm going to... I just want to... What? I just want to address the applicants. Uh, if I can read tea leaves, it sounds like you're... Uh, the appeal's going to be turned down, but we are very concerned, um, you know, with with the issues that you maintain, um, the reputation that you've gained over the last 25 or 30 years, that you maintain that in Palmdale. We take this extremely seriously. And the issues that have been raised by the people that appeal this have a lot of legitimacy, but at the same time we have to balance, as, as the mayor has pointed out, we have to strike a balance, and um, so you're going to be watched. We wish you great success, but we want to make sure that you abide and be a good citizen in this city. So, so you know, 
we're probably going to be shopping in there. Well, we all, I, I just want you to know, I know, I, I, I'm serious because the shop local and shop the small businesses, uh, um, we, uh, we try to practice what we're preaching here. We eat lunch at the small shops. We go to shop at the small stores to, 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 try, to try to help that process and, and basically practice what we preach. So, you know, don't, you know, we'll, we'll probably put on a disguise if we can, but, you know, um, I think Mr. Bishop was yeah. heading. No, 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 I have oh. something to say to yeah. I barely said anything. Um, I, I've been thinking about this sighting for the last couple of days since I um, picked up the agenda and saw this uh, coming up. Um, I've been struggling with making a decision. It did help a little bit hearing the testament from both sides. Um, Yes, uh, I have talked about social justice. I heard that from one of the uh, speakers. And that is something that I actually talked about, and that's something that I would like to have addressed in the new general plan, which will be. At the same time, I am also sensitive to uh, small businesses. I do feel that small businesses are um, treated unfairly, uh, compared to big boxes, uh, the ones that have come to the city, uh, there's actually been ordinances created to facilitate those big boxes coming into the city. And it's always the small businesses that suffer and have more expenses and don't have the resources to compete with those big boxes. Um, again, it's been difficult the last couple of days trying to make a decision. I have been very um, outspoken about bringing businesses to the east side. Uh, that's something that I almost tell everybody. Every, every, I but it's not a park, it's a business. So if I it's not a park, it's a business, yeah. yes. <laughs> I, I always talk about attracting restaurants and things that we need on the east side. Uh, I do feel that competition is also a healthy thing. Um, monopoli monopolizing a market uh, like we have with big markets here, uh, by our time, not, uh, not say their name, uh, it actually does. It actually does uh, make Vallarta think about a competitor, mm -hmm. somebody that uh, is a smaller uh, business than they are, somebody with less uh, resources. But from what I hear, they have great carne asada, and uh, quite honestly, I've noticed that the quality at Vallarta has kind of diminished. Uh, their quality is not and quality of meat is not the great, the greatest. Their produce sometimes also you struggle to get uh, uh, good quality. And I do say that because I do the grocery shopping. I like taking my boys with me. My twin boys are five years old. They, they love going to Vallarta. It's their favorite store. Uh, they recognize and driving on Avenue R and 47. And they like going to Vallarta because they always get a little treat. They get their uh, chocolate uh, uh, egg with a little toy inside. Uh, my granddaughter thanks you for that too, yeah. by the way. But my point again is the disadvantage that small businesses have and healthy competition. I'm sure that this will make Vallarta think about upsizing their, their game. Uh, they've made a lot of improvements and they do have these automatic tailors that I hate using uh, because I don't work for Vallarta. Why should I have right. them in groceries? That's not something that you have, I would hope, uh, because that is really the um, human touch that customers have with small businesses. Being able to talk to the uh, store employees, hey, where do I find tortillas? Where do I find, you know, I go through my uh, shopping list and I have to be able to get it and get out of there quick. And going to Vallarta, it's almost like going to Walmart now. It takes a good oh, 30, 45 that. minutes to, to get out of there. Uh, so small businesses really I don't want to really beat up one that. particular store, so. No, well, I, I mentioned Walmart too. Yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, I've been struggling with this because I talk about bringing services to the east side that are needed. I talk about social justice, and I, again, I do feel the pain for small businesses. Um, I cannot make both sides happy. Uh, I, I still don't know what my decision is going to be. Once I have to make a decision, I will make it. Uh, but I do, again, feel that the importance of this issue, because, again, the social justice, the protection of our kids, the, the easy access uh, to those things. And I, I like the comment from uh, Ms. Reina here that, it really starts with home. Uh, my, my father passed away last year. He was an alcoholic uh, in his youth. Uh, he, you know, he struggled with that disease. Some people call it a disease. Um, we struggle on the oldest of eight. 
we had an alcoholic father. He uh, recovered he, through a double A. Uh, for three years, he stopped drinking, he stopped eating meat, he stopped smoking. Um, and none of my brothers became alcoholics. Why? Because my mother was there. She is the one that really made us think about what we could become. And it starts at home. I do have four kids. I do try my best to make the best example for them in all aspects of life. So I, I do believe that it starts at home. Uh, I feel both sides. Um, again, I just wanted to let you know that I, I will have to make a decision when the motion is made. I think we oh. had a motion. I was, I was getting there, but yeah, I agree, Juan. This isn't an easy decision, and I, I came into this not knowing where it's at, but I think the feedback from the residents and the community is what helps make the decision possible. So, well, and, and Juan and I both live on the east side. I literally live off Thirty Fifth Street, right around the corner. So, but far enough away that it's not a conflict. Well, yeah, okay. definitely, yeah, a little farther down towards us. Right. But still, they, that's, that's that's my neighborhood. I, the whole neighborhood I consider my neighborhood, and Juan does too because he's east side. And this is very very difficult. Um, I work for the sheriff's department. I I I know the crime in that area, but as as a single person, um, I think, well, would I rather go in and buy beer and wine at your place or at the place across the street, which I won't go into, if you know what I'm talking about. Um, I, I came in here really with my mind made up that I was going to vote no on this because I don't want more alcohol in my city. I just don't. But like they said, big stores versus little stores, where, you know, who, who do we let in? Who do, where, where is that balance? Regulate your name on the door. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I've done a lot of real soul searching since you all have come in here and talked, and this is a truly difficult decision to make. Um, when we talk about 93550, I've, I've lived there over 20 years. And um, it, as, a, as a, a person with the Sheriff's Department and the City Council, I feel very obligated to do what I can to keep 93550 safe and family-oriented. So this is a huge decision for me. Um, but I also have the comfort of knowing that it can be revoked at any time. And it, it, you guys can definitely be, be watched and hopefully we'll get a good security plan in if it's passed. Um, I also am concerned somewhat about how it will affect the business next to you, the, the restaurant. So, and then I saw your hours were seven to 10 and I'm trying to, you know, I, I really read the details of this. So, I mean, like Juan, I truly don't know which button I'm gonna push until the very last moment. But the testimony here, as, as long as it was, was very important um, because we did get to hear both sides. And I can see both sides. So. What was your motion, sir? <laughs> All right. Was. So with that said. Yes, sir. And Sorry. with this very in-depth discussion we had tonight, I'm going to go ahead and move in favor of resolution CC 2019-111 that the City Council uphold the Planning Commission approval of conditional use permit 19-011. I okay, have a motion and a second. Any further discussion before we vote? Just one, one comment. It's been a lot of, in the work, in the line of work that I do, um, character testimony is very significant and important. And the character evidence that we heard tonight on those people who know this business, that is to say this establishment, and these people was very persuasive to me. I know that the uh, issues on the other side are important. But um, if it, there was a lot of uh, testimony here that supports the applicant, and uh, so I've seconded our motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Okay, there it is. Okay, it's 5 0. Um, motion passes. Okay, let's keep the dialogue okay. open. Yeah. Okay, so we had uh, we're like 23? Item number 23. AV AQMD, Mr. Bishop, would you like to post? I'm sure they we got. We still got some more business we have to do here. Should we? Should we give it a minute? Yeah. Let's let's give a minute to clear yeah, out. Yeah. Thank. I want to thank everybody for being here. So. Yeah. Thank you guys. We appreciate you coming out and staying late. Thanks. We're not going to make you stay. You can go if you want. Probably have to like hey, work to tomorrow, right? Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah.
question about the implication that you don't have anything to say. That's like annoying me. She lost a lot of credibility that she said that. Well, that was wrong. wrong. The false accusation that these people. Well, there was there was two or three times they did that. I know. Yeah, I, I thought that was. That to me, I mean, that was. Yeah. I have concerns. But that that pushed me over. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Bishop. Thanks, Bishop. Thank you. So which one are we dealing with now? So now we're down to informational reports. Oh. So we did, we did the last item? I'm, I'm trying hard. That's why I tried to get those. We did 22.2. Is the ordinance uh, 1030, Matt? 11. Uh, <laughs> nice, nice, oh, nice not. try. We did nice try. Two. Yeah. Yeah, we did both of those, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we, we, I just moved the whole item up. We did both of those. That was a capper. Remember what else is going on? Oh, that's right, that's right. I think we're okay. That's right, that's right. I think we're going to be okay. Okay. Can we get the doors there? Okay. So we'll go down to uh, item number 23. Um, Mr. Bishop, do you want to do the AQMD? Uh, you yes, sir. Most of that meeting. I, yes, I would. Uh, Semi-light meeting, but what I took away from that uh, was we did award a grant towards Antelope Valley Chevy in the amount of $13,158 for an electric vehicle's charging station at their dealership. That was uh, one of the action items we took. Uh, I believe there's more electric cars coming on the road, especially in the next year or two, so I think they're gearing up for that to be able to uh, charge That's cars. That's my diesel. What, your, your <laughs> clean diesel? Yeah, my clean diesel. Yeah. So, yeah, I think uh, I think that's going to work well for them because as more electric cars come on the market, they'll be able to charge the vehicles and then have them fully charged and ready to yeah. go. Yeah, that's been, a, that's been a problem. People are picking their cars up and they can't get them home because the battery's dead. So Yeah, yeah when I bought yeah. mine, it was, came with a dead battery. Okay. So that was and we the, also had the, um, the, actually speaking of diesel, remember we had 120 grand for uh, diesel Oh, for the allotment of uh, future grants? Yeah, 120000 mobile grant, mobile source emission reduction program for assisting local businesses in replacing older heavy-duty diesel right. engines. We move that money in there as well. We'll be able to start awarding that to businesses next year, correct? Right. Okay, good. And Clean. the power safety shutoffs? Power safety power shutoffs. shutoffs. Remember, you gave us the whole presentation. Oh, yeah. yeah. So if your power gets shut off, it's, it's not the AQMD, but the, the issue that came up was everybody's got all these generators and the, and it all goes everything goes to everything goes to um, the, the AQMD numbers go up yeah we had a good discussion about gas generators the kind of emissions and then I brought up uh, solar generators to becoming more popular battery systems and stuff like that I know when we had the power go out in Ante Verde uh, about a month ago uh, we were down for a while I had a handful of neighbors that invested into uh, an expensive solar generator systems with battery that was able to Kind of keep them going. And it's amazing how they changed. It used to be called a battery pack with a solar panel. Now it's, no, a, it's solar a solar generator. generator. Yeah. yeah. They'll charge you more for it's it. It's fancy. Uh, okay. AQMD. So that's about it. So just a reminder: if you if you buy an electric vehicle, or if you got something uh, that you think uh, your business can benefit, that there's quite a bit of quite a conduit of funding out there. Yeah, and more electric vehicles are on the way, so we'll be able to the residents of the Antelope Valley will be able to take advantage. Of the ABA keel and do more as the products become more available. Uh, Richard, did you want to take uh, the uh, ABTA? Sure. Um, we did meet, and uh, one thing specific to Palmdale is that uh, we authorized the um, executive director to execute a contract with the uh, electrical company for $1,763,000 for a charging station right behind the um, clinic at 40th uh, East and Palmdale Boulevard. So that's for the buses to go back there and, uh, and be charged. So uh, that's a substantial thing and it's consistent with the general movement towards replacing all of the diesel buses with electrical buses. Is that, is that on Palmdale Boulevard or behind the... It's behind the medical center. You know the clinic is there? Yeah. So the buses drop off back there. So uh, we've got yeah. the, the adjacent empty, unused, and it'll probably never be used lot that's right there. And what they found is that the buses are going in there, and they're spending a lot of time because they have a lot of disabled people. And it's taken them a long time to load and unload those buses. We said, well, we're, we're, we're searching around trying to figure out where to put a charging station. 
do it there because the bus is sitting there anyhow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it just really it, it, it just all fit, and that may help with us trying to get some TOD funding out in that that neighborhood over there. Uh, yeah. So I think we can make that happy. Yeah. So that's that's one thing we approved. Um, there was a special recognition for Judy McCarl for the work that she does and legislation and grants. And uh, we received reports about the ongoing uh, savings that is generated by going to uh, electrical um, buses. Um, and uh, the AVTA staff has been very active in uh, obtaining grant programs and we received a report that uh, that received during um, 2019 uh, is $12,294,000. So that's a significant amount of uh, money that the staff has been able to uh, obtain uh, for the Animal Valley Transit Authority. So that's uh, that was very positive information that was received there. Good. Uh, I think we had a contract cities meeting past month I think the last one was the month before they went to um, audit committee Austin did you want to report on uh, we, I mean we had the whole report but any, anything um, it, are we finding a path towards identifying a way because the, the audit committee provided us the opportunity to discuss this uh, with the Palmdale Community Foundation money because we had all these monies that were allocated to bizarre little uh, pet projects that people wanted to see done. The community and, fund? Yeah, and, and people yeah. would sit there and, and they donate $1,000 towards a harpsichord, and we're never going to get a harpsichord. I think right now we have about a half a million or so yeah. in sitting in that, and I think they're finishing uh, that part of the audit. Uh, but, yeah, we have those funds sitting there. We need to figure out what to do with them. Yeah, we, need, we really need to come to a solution with that. I know that Carrie's been lo- looked at that because she'd like to get her hands on that money. Uh, and I know it's been a project of Ann's, so uh, I know we've been looking, but we've got to got to be more careful about how how we accept these funds. It's certain, uh, yeah, we can yeah, only use certain funds for certain things. Yes, yeah, just kind of getting ready. Yeah. Okay, that's been a pet peeve of mine for a while. Uh, Investment Oversight Committee, did you have one, uh, Richard? Were you in a, anybody in on that, or no? No. Uh, High Desert Quarter, no meetings. League of Cities, I think. Um, actually, the meetings this week, the League of Cities. Oh no, we had the oh. We had a meeting with Mr. Perti as the surprise guest of honor. And uh, we did organizational uh, uh, um, organizational reorganization, uh, set meeting dates. Um, and I th- did you guys get the dates for the upcoming meetings and things? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, just so you know. Uh, oh, wait, yeah, thank you very much for being there. I want to thank everybody for, for showing up. That was uh, uh, to have um, uh, a majority of our council there. And uh, some of the key staff was just great. So um, we got, we're going to host a meeting later in the year. Sanitation? Any report from Sanitation? Oh, maybe week. Okay, good. That was right. Those were canceled. NCTC, no meeting. Recycle water. Did you guys have a meeting, Austin? We did. And no, we uh, did. I'll let Juan cover that. Yeah, yeah Juan, we did. And the item that we had was the, the budget, I believe. We passed the, the budget mm-hmm. for next year. Uh, and I asked about the Amargosa uh, recharge program. And I know that we received what? an invitation to the... When's that, when's that ribbon cutting? The, we have the opening on the 12th. 12th? Is, yeah. this the, is it the 12th? 12th. Okay. okay. December 12th. Yeah. So yeah. those were the two um, things that we discussed. Great. Um, I did not go to SCAG because I was at the other meeting. So there was a conflict there for that that one. Um, I was hoping to see you there. Yeah. yeah November just, 7th. Uh, you know, it can only be in so many places at once, and this is one of those deals where I had that mm-hmm. I had a I had an overlap, and I just wasn't able to make it. I did watch it, but uh, um, with the uh, over the um, uh, I did the uh, the video conference on that thing, you know. So uh, mm-hmm. interesting, interesting meeting. Very interesting, interesting meeting. I, I, the yeah. dynamics were. It, you know what? <laughs> I just I don't want to make light of it. But when everybody was shoving everything to the Inland Empire in the high desert, everybody was going, you know, saying what a great job they were doing. And all of a sudden, when they're when they're all everybody's bragging about all the jobs they've got in their area, and they're kind of complaining about traffic. When they say, "Well, fine, let's move the housing to over there," now their hair's on fire. Yeah. <laughs> so I think we'll see some ongoing appeals. But uh, I think that I think we're I think this I think it's a balancing act, though. Thank you for your participation there. I know it's it's not easy. 
No, it's not easy, but it's something that we need to pay attention to. Yeah. And I actually got the courage to actually make a couple of comments. Yeah. Uh, I was... Uh, well, yeah, I like the way you sit yourself, right? So that the camera sees you all the time behind yeah, the speakers. Yeah, the boy. president <laughs> kind of told me that. The next item was going to be on the uh, regional council. Yeah, but it's still, there's no jobs in, in, you know, in the, the outside portions of the uh, region, like yeah. in Coachella, there's no jobs over there. Then they expect them to build 15,000 homes. Yeah. You know, here, here us in, in the Antelope Valley, we Lancaster ourselves in the county, it's like over 30,000 units. Yep. And cities where they provide the jobs, like Culver City. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's okay. Well, I remember there was one, what, one of those cities was just going nuts. And I sat there thumbing through the book, and they had 39 units. Yeah. And they're going nuts, about mm -hmm. 39 units. I said... Next speaker. Yeah, it's very interesting to, to yeah. see how those. Wait, you have appeals for eight units, like from one of the beach cities. Yes, yeah. you know, those cities with more resources board. will be appealing uh, the decision that HCD is going to make. Yeah. And I hope that they do uh, make the recommendation from Skag Region uh, with those numbers, which made a big difference. Um, the, let's see, Sister Cities is the next one. We went. They they had a dinner. We went over there. Had a very nice dinner with those folks. They're working really really hard on helping everybody understand things. Uh, yep. our, our cultural um, similarities. And they had uh, karaoke at that fundraiser. Oh, I, I, I wish you wouldn't have brought that up. <laughs> so they tricked the mayor to do a song. It was a very easy song, Tequila. And then, <laughs> and then they had us both sing another song. So that was, it was just It was just because it was... That was the only word in the song. That's so. <laughs> the one word in the song. Yeah. So. But anyways, it was a, it was a fun night, and they raised some money, and uh, yeah. they're doing some good stuff. And I think they're having a, a a holiday party this Saturday, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So. I'm gonna try to make that, but uh, as I said, I had one of my former scouts passed away, so there's yeah. his services Saturday. Right. Right. Okay. Uh, and then um, Laura's not here, so we don't have anything in uh, prison committee. Um, Austin, you want to start down here, and we'll just work our way down for the uh, uh, other stuff. Yeah, it's a bunch of bunch of stuff throughout the month. Um, had a meeting with Kinky Shario that included you, Mayor. We talked about uh, the jobs there, what's kind of going on there. We uh, met with uh, with their executives and 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 just brainstormed so we could see uh, what the situation is going to be like, what their workloads like, and uh, what's to be anticipated over the next couple of years and what we can do to be a better partner with them. I think it was uh, very beneficial. Also, Before you go off that topic, so I've got follow-up on that. Yes. I've got letters back from Kinky Shara. I got contact back from the college. Um, yes, they're having some layoffs over there because they run out of cars to build and another one's coming up. College is trying to find that path to get these guys into additional training stuff. Uh, they have some equal access issues they have to make sure they uh, abide by. Um, the, um, the unions are looking at some other MC3 programs to potentially move guys out to, uh, and um, uh, just quite a bit of it. Quite a bit came out of that meeting by us doing right. some follow up. We learned that a lot of those guys that um, don't have that are no longer that have employment with Kinky Shario, they're qualified and they've been moving over to like a, like Northrop or. Yep. Lockheed or, you know, company. And I think they said something like about two-thirds of them. Yeah, right? a lot of them are moving yeah. over to Some of the guys aerospace. have got clearance issues, and so that, that doesn't help them. Right, but a good, know, percentage kind of them a good percentage of them are finding work pretty much within the same area. I went over and met with the guys over at the hall, and we talked about it. And some of them are, are, are a little bit upset, but, you know, hey, we're doing everything we can and making all those contacts. Right. So thank you for being at that meeting because that was very helpful for those execs to see us and hear that discussion right so. well the jobs here are important and you know especially when they're they're jobs like you know these are gigs and you know the work is there and then it, and then it goes so it's um, important that we're aware of that um airport consultant meeting um that kind of laid out everything uh on the table of what it's going <laughs> to be like if we move forward with uh building an airport um too much discussion to even open that right now, but it's something I attended. I went to the AV Veterans Wall celebration. Excellent. I attended saves when uh, last week when they were giving out the uh, Thanksgiving baskets full of food and all that stuff, some of which baskets and bags were probably packed by mayor. 
during community volunteer day. Uh, For it, some reason, they put me on sanitary details. So I was packing up toilet paper and handy wipes and things. So I don't know how I got picked for that, but you know what? That's important stuff. Because if you're out trying to figure out how to handle a business, that's important stuff. So yeah, and um, it was it was kind of cool with all the people. It, that's the best part of the experience is being able to talk talk with all those other volunteers. Right, and we're having another one coming up soon. Another volunteer day as we get ready for uh, for Christmas. And actually, while I'm on the topic of saved, while well, while I learned today at the uh, Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, uh, CHP does the uh, Toys for Kids or Toys for Tots drive. Um, I learned today that they donate about 5,000 toys or so to saves. So, just this is a lot. Gave a total of what, 9,000? And so about half the toys. It was like 12,000, yeah. We're uh, getting, yeah, saves is getting about half the toys from CHP, which is remarkable. We totally appreciate that. Um, I had a meeting with uh, Jay Duke from Boys and Girls Club. We are actively working on trying to find them a solution, um, moving into a new building. Um, we're giving them a couple options and, and seeing also where they're at and what what they need to move forward in their operation. Um, I attended the audit committee meeting. I went to Pallets in the Park, which is uh, which was great. It was over at Rancho Vista Park, and uh, I think you were right. cheating at that food uh, the whatever that game was. That you were now I ended up losing at the foosball oh, game, but oh, I thought it was Pallets in the Park, which was like actually wooden pallets, which they did have in there, but it was actually pallets like the art pallet. Mm -hmm. But there was a stack of, of shipping pallets in there, which was really confusing. <laughs> <laughs> but they cleared that up. I went to the Palmdale Chamber and I heard... Uh, Wait, you didn't tell everybody. What? So he gets into a battle with kids on the on the, on that little soccer table thing Foosball. right there. Yeah, you know. Oh, he, he, needed some, to, he needed some trying to, to develop relationships and everything. And he's over there and he's just... I didn't win. Okay. <laughs> All right. Is that better? That's all right. All right. I went to the Palmdale Chamber. I think you got kicked. <laughs> Scott and Tom spoke uh, about the state of California. That was always exciting. Um, I had a city manager lunch meeting last week. Uh, very informational and uh, got to have my last lunch with city manager Jim Pertin. Um, and today, today I attended the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce with Richard Lowe. And I'm sure there's more, but that's that's it for me. Go ahead. Okay, I, we went to the uh, well, I went to the uh, along with my wife and the mayor Civ Mill installation dinner out at Edwards Air Force Base. That was uh, that was good. That was really good. Uh, it, it looks like the organization is moving in a good direction and will continue the good work in the community. And, uh, and I think that support JJ will testify to this is right, JJ was so there. critical to the people that are there. You know. So, it, for us, for them to have us there and let them know that we're there, should tell us what you need. Yeah, it's a good uh, union between the civilians in the community and uh, and the military out there, the Air Force, and that union supporting our, our military out there at Edwards uh, was the it's celebration of the night. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see, I did go to the Veterans Day at Marine Kerr. Yeah over the wall there, and uh, it was great to see the vets go up and, and receive their, um, uh, the distribution of medals that were being given out that day. Uh, like I said, we, we, Mayor and I went to the Sister Cities fundraiser. Um, I, went, I also attended part of the um, airport consultants meeting. That was very informational. I think great, great stuff is going to be happening from that. There's a lot of unity. Um, went out to Apple Valley to the League of Cities meeting and then the uh, distribution of Chim Chimboli Awards, which uh, gave the recognition to our city the manager, first Jim Pertin. mayor of Palmdale. Chimboli, the first mayor of Palmdale. And also Juan Carrillo, right? Mm -hmm. it was a Juan Carrillo received recognition there. And, uh, and that was good. It was good to, to see that you, you had that recognition. Uh, ABTA, as I've already reported, uh, a few days ago we were at the American Classic Christmas that was held here at Ponce Plan. Which, despite the fact that it was cold and raining, there was a good crowd out there. And it was good to see the, uh, the kids. And, uh, you know, congratulations to uh, And Mike. another super majority of the council. Right. Yeah, yeah that's snow, great. I mean, it's good for people to see that. The snow was a nice touch, but the, uh, the rain was not. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, there were real icicles coming off of the um, yeah, cathedral there. Yeah. And uh, again, thanks to the staff, uh, Ann Ambrose, uh, Mrs. Santa Claus, John. John with Santa, and then the two Mikes. Mike he was Mike. over there hiding, but <laughs> they did their thing again. That was that was cool. And the other Mike is over there. Where's the other Mike? Oh, there you are. <laughs> so you gave us a little warm-ups for our hands. That, that helped out a little bit. And today the Hispanic Luncheon, Hispanic Chamber Luncheon, uh, CHP was there. And uh, Mr. Hernandez gave a good presentation on the history and all of the attributes and things that the CHP does to keep California safe. Apparently yeah. they protect elected officials too, like the governor. And I didn't yeah. know they do. Yeah. Uh, the CHP yeah. does personal bodyguard protection. Yeah, yeah they well. when they absorbed the state police, but they kept the the CHP moniker and brought everybody into the CHP. So yeah, they do all that. Yeah. They have a pretty impressive uh, dignitary protection program. I, yeah. I work with them a few times. It's pretty. Cool. Yeah, they do. They cover a lot of. That is a dignitary. So and, yeah, uh, this is a. Well, we have our deputies staff here. Front, <laughs> so keep the peace here. Thank you guys. Good. There's probably more of it. Yeah. Go ahead. Some of the same things for me, the uh, Christmas celebration, really cool. The kids really enjoy that. Uh, the uh, desert. Yeah, you had your guys out there too, so. Yeah, yeah, they really had a lot of fun. Uh, the uh, desert region organization with the Chimboli uh, Award. Um, I already mentioned the ECHD meetings and things. Meetings yeah, and things appreciate like that. Right there. Um, and a couple of other things. But in, I want to mention that I'm going to be going to Phoenix, Arizona this weekend. I got, an, uh, I got a scholarship from NALEO, the National Association of Latino Elected Officials. They're going to have a conference uh, in Phoenix this Friday and Saturday uh, on public finance management and bonds. So that's another great opportunity for me to come up with great ideas for JJ. Yeah. <laughs> Hang on, JJ. Here it comes. <laughs> yeah. Ready for the debrief. <laughs> And lastly, I want to apologize to staff. I uh, sent a couple of emails and text messages freaking out about the Prop 68 site visits. Uh, I do remember now that I was told that the visit was on November 14, but because we had our visits today in Coachella, and I saw a bunch of uh, people yeah, supporting yeah, a different, the so. Prop uh, 68 money, I just got a little freaked out with us, not where I thought we would not be prepared. Uh, but I thank you for that clarification on the email. Follow the instructions from people that are on a grant. And I want to thank you for the clarification so I could yeah. stop my ear from bleeding from yeah. the phone calls. <laughs> I was getting. So I apologize. No, I appreciate I appreciate it. You know, it's a dialogue to prevent yeah. those that in the future. So. Well, like you said, if it's not parks, it's businesses on the east side. I will continue to do that. So <laughs> I apologize, guys. Thank you. So that's my report. All right, so I had a lot of the same meetings uh, that uh, some of the other gentlemen have mentioned here. Palace in the Park was out there to that. Uh, the Hippocrates, Hippocrates uh, Circle program out at the, um, out at the uh, uh, Hellenic Center uh, provided some certificates for a bunch of uh, rec people being recognized there. The Kinkasharo meetings, uh, Sheriff's Coffee with a Cop, uh, the CAC Town Hall meeting out at Oasis. Uh, those are always um, interesting. Uh, yeah, there's some good dialogue that goes on there. Um, the, uh, uh, let's see, AV Wall, uh, our SCAG, uh, we went down to, uh, with uh, Ms. Betancourt uh, on, on, on her behalf. Um, we went down with uh, Mr. Murphy down to uh, uh, the uh, ALAD sponsored meeting with the, um, with the sheriff, where it was a little bit smaller environment uh, as opposed to uh, a mob scene in a, in a public hall, and we were able to sit there and have a bit of a dialogue, ask some questions, get try to get a little bit of specificity as far as how we're um, how we're moving forward, how we're dealing with things, their opinion about different augmented crime programs. Say that okay? Did I say that okay? All right. Um, so uh, I, I thought it was a very beneficial. Very beneficial dinner, and uh, on both sides, because the sheriff is able to hear directly from from the people that are um, that are getting the calls from the public. Um, uh, probably one of the most emotional um, programs I've attended in a long time was over at the city of Hope Antelope Valley, and it was a story. If you haven't seen the movie, uh, it's a YouTube. It's called Honor Flight, and it's about. Um, uh, 
getting the uh, old timers, you know, World War II vets and Korea vets, the handful that we have left, and getting them to go back to D.C. to see the memorials and stuff. And um, so they're they're working on trying to get one. There's one out of Bakersfield, but there's a group of guys and some of our guys from um, our veterans groups are trying to work on. And how cool it would be if we could do one of those and fly the guys out of Edwards, you know? So there's there's a lot of discussion going on, but it was absolutely amazing. Um, well, if you watch that thing, uh, have a box of Kleenex, man, because it's not it's not easy. Um, Sid Mill dinner with um, I was out there with um, Mr. Loa. Uh, it's really important to support these uh, uh, these. Uh, I mean, amazing young officers and some of these absolutely dedicated enlisted people is amazing. Um, I got to go out to uh, Kaiser Veterans Day event, went out there on Veterans Day. Um, it, that, was, uh, that was really great. Kaiser brings everybody in that's all veterans. We get to, to meet their veterans. They tell us a little bit about themselves. And uh, you don't realize how many people that you're working with or that are doing, you know, that you're running into in these other environments that have extensive, I mean, and fairly impressive uh, military records. It just, it blew me away. Um, liability Trust Fund, and a fun time was had by all there. Um, the uh, C, I went up to CHP volunteers. We had a, uh, a bunch of guys from, uh, and ladies, from Antelope Valley and the Palmdale's, uh, Antelope Valley and Mojave stations, and um, graduated. Bunch of more, the senior volunteers. They only have to be 55 to be a senior volunteer. Uh, and um, uh, so that was, um, it's good to see all those, uh, all those, uh, all those old timers out there working for us. Um, grand reopening of John Smith subs, good sandwiches over there for 47, support of 47 street businesses. Um, uh, family volunteer day over at, uh, like Mr. Bishop had uh, spoke about, uh, over at Saves, that was great. We got to go out and get paid on ourselves out in Curson Park. Um, I had, let's see, that, that was canceled. Uh, AQMD. Um, uh, Eagle Scout Ceremony. Um, Desert Mountain Division meeting we talked about. Um, yeah. We had the meeting with the Kinky Sherrill guys. We had the airport meeting. Uh, seven hours of probably... I got more information in one day than I've gotten in the last 10 years. Um, American Classic Christmas out here. I don't know if I stumbled reading Night Before Christmas too badly. Um, and then this morning, um, Mr. Murphy and I uh, got up uh, well before the sun and um, traveled down to uh, the Hall of Administration and um, for the reception for the supervisor as, her, as she was uh, um, ascending to the uh, role of a chair of the uh, Board of Supervisors and got to have uh, a chat with pr pretty much all the other supervisors that were there. It was a very informal, uh, just have some coffee and juice and a bagel and let's chit chat and, and it was it was a good opportunity uh, just to kind of reinforce relationships. So, and the supervisor took the gavel tonight, today at the meeting. So, so she is now the chair of the board of supervisors. So, much more stuff. But it's late. But it's late. So, all right, Mr. City Manager, any? Uh... So nothing to report on. The okay, thank you. And so oh. forth. I, I do thank just you. in the interest of time. Uh, but I do just want to thank each one of my staff, uh, those that have left here, those that are still sticking it out. <laughs> you know, uh, I think the council's made it. JJ, up. take a look around the room. Those are the guys that stick it out, right? That's right. The council's made a great decision in transitioning with JJ. I couldn't be happier knowing what hands the city of Palmdale is, is going to be in. Uh, Captain Ron, a class act that has pulled off miracles uh, with you and your deputies and the partnerships that we have to drive that crime rate down. Uh, to really make this city shine. Mike Miller, everything that you do uh, to work with the housing and the homeless and, and at the same time, you know, the carry down the stick, the code enforcement side and the, and the housing side, it's a, it's a very interesting schizophrenic job and you do it so well. Uh, carry the miracles that you pull off every year, including the other, the programming and the events and so forth that 
um, really do make this pla a place to call home. Uh, Mark, uh, we've worked together for over 25 years, um, and so we have a good history, and, and you're going to really help move this city forward. We have such great things teed up for this city, and not to forget Mike Behan sitting back there. Uh, you know, our transportation you, song, no. oh. and, uh, and then Renee keeping us on our toes here with our IT equipment, and finally Becky. Uh, who makes things happen. You know, I talked to my staff this week about you know, this agenda takes a village to put together and it takes the clerk's office to make it, uh, make it right. And uh, words matter. And we saw it tonight, we saw it play out that the items in this agenda impact people's lives. And so they're really important to us. They're important to the community. And we take a lot of pride in, in what we produce here and what goes on here on, on Tuesday nights. And so with that, I'm signing off uh, my last time on this dais, except for maybe the workshop in a couple of weeks. But uh, Yeah, so we got a workshop on 17th? On the 17th, general plan workshop. 7 o'clock or 6 o'clock? What time are we doing it? I think that's 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. And so uh, it's been a great ride. It's a great 31 years. I think we do. We have a uh, we have a uh, we have the staff Christmas parties coming up. Staff Christmas par parties coming up. There's a retirement uh, thing coming up. I think on the 18th. Uh, the official yeah. retirement party will be January 9th. I believe that's a Thursday. I'm not looking at my calendar, but uh, that'll that'll get out to everybody. Uh, so uh, really excited to be be back for that. Uh, the Palmdale Regional. Hospital has asked me to stay on their board, and so I'll be up here every couple months to keep an eye on everybody and, and check in and, and see what's happening when I come up for board meetings. Thank you all. Thank you. Okay. Oh, I, uh, one thing I did forget was I met with the Children's Center yesterday. I saw on the topic that Mr. Bishop brought yep. up with the uh, Boys and Girls Club, uh, Children's Center is also looking to do some similar things, so we, we might want to be looking at is there a, is there, is there a, um, an opportunity to collaborate between these different organizations? Because we spoke to the supervisor about some children's and youth mm -hmm. things because she's trying to get Challenger Youth Center. Well, the board's trying to close down Challenger. And we've got to start thinking about how do we, how do we deal with issues before they become issues, yep. you know? So. And with that, you know, any new agenda items you guys want to put on for, for the next meeting, just just whatever you want now. Let's see how easy this is. So. We actually have a couple of I mean, items that I wanted to ask. Yeah. Um, and not necessarily for next uh, council meeting because I know the holidays yeah. are here. But I, I'd like to see the council can get an update on all of the uh, consultant based projects like the IEFD, the arts program, and the facility naming. Uh, I'd like to know where we are with all, all of those uh, programs. Um, just to know, you know, what we can expect in the coming yeah, who's year. Who's working for us out there, yeah. too? Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. yeah, so we know where we are with those three. Um, those, are, those are the ones that come to mind. Again, the IEFD, the ARS program, and the naming of the facilities that may have the wrong name for that. Sponsorship. Sponsorship. Yeah, yeah there you go. That's what I was looking for. Yeah. Uh, if I can, we, we can get uh, an update on where we are with those. Okay. Brian, you got anything? Okay, Mike and Mike, you guys were phenomenal, even with the numb fingers. So, <laughs> so. yeah, yeah, good time. Yeah, all good. All right, so see everybody on the seventeenth. If there's nothing else, we can go ahead and adjourn. So moved. Okay, let's get out of here. Thank you. Right. Thanks all for coming.